Good evening. Good evening. Let me get some music. Oh my gosh. Good evening. Good evening. How are you guys? How are you doing? Was it a good day? Is the chat on? How are you guys? Hey, yes, thank goodness it's Friday. Hey, Adria, how are you, woman of God? How was your day today? Hello, hello, your scope was fantastic. Fantastic. I love you. I love your wisdom, woman of God. I love your wisdom. Hey, girl, how you doing? How was your day? Hey, Sandrika. I know you have a um, testimony. We need that testimony, Sandrika. Go on and type it on in. Thank you for loving me back. Hello, hello, woman of God. It was cool. It was cool. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, this head wrap says I need to wash my hair. I just got off the road, so it is what it is. Hey, 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 I see you. I see. How are you, woman of God? Yes, yes, yes. It's Friday. It's Friday. And we are going to finish this week out strong with some prayer and some exhortation. So who has um, a testimony? <laughs> I love it, Sandrika. Don't you just love it when you, thank you, woman of God. Don't you just love it when you find stuff on sale? I do. I'm like, oh God, thank you, you love me. <laughs> People pray for good parking spots. I pray for a good sale. <laughs> I don't know why I think that's funny, but it is. Okay, who else? Who else has a awesome testimony they would care to share with us tonight? Okay, we're listening, Andrea. Oh, that you pray for a good sale too. Is that what you were saying? Y'all, I will park all the way across the street if that means I get a good sale. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. When looking for a car, my, my back seats have to fold down so I can get furniture in that sucker. I mean, I got to get. <laughs> amen. Amen. Who else has a testimony? How's God been good to you? I know, uh, we're, this is the awkward moment. <laughs> Come on, anything, anything that God has done for you. God has done so many things for us. We're going to hop in in a second. But I love to talk about things that God has done for us. Because you never know who's on that could use that little bit of encouragement today. We, we really don't know. Hey, congratulations on that, Audrey. We're praying for your ministry. What's the name of your ministry? What's the name of your ministry? So we can pray for it. God is bringing people into my life that can help my vision. Amen. Amen. He is. God is, God is setting us in places where we can serve one another. Singles in waiting. Oh, I like that. Come on now. Come on. Yes. Singles in celebration. Just playing. And wherever you find yourself, celebrate. Yes, yeah, celebrate the fact that if you're not married, you, you God is, because you, you could be married to the wrong one. Trying to claw yourself into the right situation. So, amen. We overcome by the blue limb. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. So I love to talk about, hey, hey, Landa. I love to talk about um, testimonies because... You just, we don't know each other. You just never know who's on the edge. And your testimony is the thing that we make, where they see God. You know, it's the preaching, the teaching, all that is good. But when you come to somebody else and they're doing life 
and they tell a story or they tell you their story and you see God and you walk away encouraged because you know God. Huh. If God did it for them, God can do it for you. So we honor testimonies on here. We just don't want to pray, 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 teach, 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 prophesy, prophesy, prophesy. We want to see the manifested hand of God in your life, in the small things and the big things. We celebrate God in everything. We celebrate God in everything. Amen? Amen. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Amen. So, hope. Hey, hey. Yes, yes. Amen. And keep that up. And, and give that to people, Audrea. Give that to people. Give that to people. How to pray for the people who come into your life. And here's another thing, people, before we, we hop in. And we're going to be, I'm going to be praying some decrees over you from this book. I was on Apostle John's um, scope earlier today. He was talking about the diamond. And um, he referred to this book. And I have it. And I wanted to, I know Chesa Rain, I don't think she's going to be on here, but she talked about, she asked the question the other week about praying through like prayer books or books that have decrees when you have to read them. And sometimes when, how many of you guys have done that? Sometimes when you're reading like certain prayer books, I've got a lot of them. Like you're just, it feels like you're reading a script almost sometimes. And then you like get to the end of the page and you're like, did it take? <laughs> So I wanted to do a demonstration on how I go through prayer books. And so I'm going to use this today. Hey Amen. I'm glad. I was feeling some kind of way yesterday when I got up. I was like, um, Lord, was the connection made? <laughs> but thank you, woman of God. So I'm going to show you how I pray through prayer books. And so you can take this model. You probably already do it, but you can take this model. And when you have like something that you're praying through, how to, how to get started. And then... When God begins to speak through those, through the words, you know what I mean? Then that's when we know we've hit gold or we've hit diamonds, if you will. Why I like Apostle John's books is because the, the prayers are from the scripture. They're from the scriptures. I know sometimes, I don't know if you guys have seen those books where it's a lot of text and it's like father in the name of Jesus is fill in the blank. And then it's saying all of these things and there are scriptures that are kind of put in there, but his mostly are scriptures. Scriptures, and then you have the room to kind of fill in the blank. So I'm going to read some of these over you, and I'm going to draw out some of the butter or the oil, if you will, um, when we're praying. But before we get started, I wanted to do a little exercise before we begin to pray. And today we're going to be praying, um, yep, today we're going to be praying specifically over finances. So I usually don't say share whatever. But if you know some people specifically that are in a season where they are literally like pushing through to the next place and it seems like finances are kind of staying in the way or finances, hindrances, not finances, but hindrances to their finances being released, then uh, invite them. And this is, that's when I'm going to use the book. That's when I'm going to begin to say certain scriptures over you. Um, because we have to understand the word supersedes every, every single stronghold. The word wins every single time. God wins every single time. Every single time, God wins. God wins. And so today, we're getting on the scope tonight, and we're saying, by, by saying these um, uh, scriptures, by praying these prayers, we say God wins. We are not going to be on here begging for God to come through. We're not on here begging. This sounds really loud to me. I feel like I'm having to yell. We're not, um, we're not begging God to perform his word. His word has already been performed. His word is already sure. The testimonies of God are already rooted. Heaven and earth will pass away before one jot or to the love of his word it would. And so we're, 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 we are enforcing, we are making a decision, and then we are praying it out. We are fleshing it out. We are worshiping it out tonight. And so if you know some people who got some you know, financial issues, invite them. Invite them. But before we did that, before we went into the financial issues and we began to pray the financial things, I wanted to, um, I wanted to, um, I'm smelling something. I don't know what that is. I wanted to ask you in this season, what do you perceive God wants you to do? In this season, what is it that you perceive God wants you to do? And there's only eight of us on here. There's only eight of us on here. And for some people, this is going to be a stretch. For some people, it's going to be a stretch because they haven't said it yet. They haven't typed it yet. They haven't put it out in the world yet. They, they kind of hold it in their heart. 
What is it in this season that you know you perceive God is pushing you to do? What is it? We need clarity. Before we begin to pray about the release of finances, before we begin to pray about the open heaven on your finances, before we begin to pray about the provision, what is the vision, not for your overall life, for this season right now, what is God saying you're supposed to be doing? I'm believing God for lucrative contracts. Okay, I need you to go deeper. What is God, what do you perceive that God is wanting you to do? I'm going to be praying for lucrative contracts. You see how that goes? I'm going to be praying for the contracts. But what is God saying for you to be doing? And if you're already doing it, how is God tweaking it in this season? God is always moving. The kingdom is always moving. God is always calling us out deeper. God is always calling us out higher. So what is God saying in this season? Okay, amen. Amen. I like that. Um, what is God saying in this season that you are to be moving into, that you are to be um, experiencing or ex expounding upon, or how are you to show up and serve people? What is the new activity for this particular season? You're in bloom. What is blooming? That's what I'm asking. You're in bloom. What is blooming? You're in bloom. What is blooming? What's blooming? Type it in. And I don't want the I don't want the fluffy stuff. I know, I know sometimes you guys probably feel like I'm pushing you. I'm a I'm a spiritual bully. <laughs> well, I kind of am. Hey, Mr. Mac is in the building. Yes, you're getting married. What is God saying about that marriage and about the married life? God is saying, learn and grow in my gift to eventually open a staffing agency. Okay, learning and growing. What particularly? You're getting there. What particularly? How does learning and growing, what does that look like? The learning piece, the networking piece. What has God been pushing you to do? When, when we begin to pray for the release of the provision, and guys, provision, resources comes in terms of people, things, doors being opened, plethora of ways, but we got to have clarity. Hey, hey, man of God, thank you for joining. You got to have clarity. Got to have clarity. Because a lot of times we're praying, we're praying, we're enforcing, we're enforcing the blessing of God. We're enforcing the hand of God, but we don't know where it's going. And so the hand of God is moving in this area over here, but we're looking over here and then over here and then over here and then back over here because, hey, woman of God, because we don't have clarity about the move of God right now. The what is blooming right now? What is blooming right now? Is this hard? And if it is, it's okay. Let's deal with it. <laughs> Let's deal with it. I'm not into fluffing stuff. I'm not into, you know, play, praying Playing. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Playing. No, you're supposed to be telling me what is God, you're supposed to be telling me what is God saying about this season? What are you supposed to be doing? Where, how are you supposed to be showing up? What's the new thing? What is the next thing? Learning how to operate a business effectively. What are those, what are those steps? What are those things in the learning piece? Are you going to school? Are you taking classes? Are you getting a mentor from a specific person? Y'all see where I'm going with this? What are the details? It's fine. If you don't know, say I don't know. That's what I'm trying to get to. I'm trying to, I'm trying to see. There's not a trick question in it. Hey, hey guys, it's okay if you don't know. It's okay. It's okay. I don't want you to have to fake the funk. I don't want you to have to put in, you know, big fluffy answers because a lot of times that's what we do. And the truth is most humans don't know what it is they want. We don't know what it is that we want. And if we don't know what it is that we want, then of course we trace it back to what is God saying? Mentoring and classes and favor and grace. Okay. I'm going to pray the favor and the grace. Do you have the mentor and do you know the classes? 
I'm really detailed. Thank you for being our example, woman of God. <laughs> I appreciate you. Is this making sense what I'm saying? What, where is the handprint of God? What is the fruit that is blooming this season? Because that's where the provision is going to show up. Where, what you perceive God is saying and doing, that's where the provision, I have a prayer request. What is it, Sandrika? What is, what is the prayer request? That's where the provision is going to show up. Okay. Reestablish confidence to restore strength and rebuild ministry. So what is God asking you to do? Okay, okay, don't let me forget, Sandrika. What is God asking you to do? I'm gonna, I'm pushing you. I'm pushing you. I'm pushing you. What has God been, how has God been pushing you into the place of confidence? Which is really courage. Pushing you. What has God been specifically saying in this season, what is blooming? Okay, all of your teaching content to be on your site before December. Thank you. I don't know for sure. Thank you. It's okay. It's okay. Writing and acting. What does that look like, Alanda? You know, I'm not going to let you get away with it. You're not sneaking under the, right, the radar. What specifically is God saying for you to do? Reviewing a mentor. Okay, is that too? Is, is there a particular person that God is saying you're supposed to be kind of making the, you know, reaching out to them and getting the ball rolling or starting that process. What specifically, Alanda? Come up higher in the things of God. What does that mean? I don't really know what that looks like. Thank you, Alanda. Trust him in spite of what it looks like in the natural. Okay, Vanessa, keep, keep fleshing that out. Praying for clarity. Okay, Sandrika, learning more, depending more on him. What does that mean? Because, okay, here's the thing. If you, if you, these are things that we know. Can I, can I, do you mind if I pick on you for a second? Do you mind? Do you mind? I need a yes, because I don't want you guys, like, you're picking on me. No, it's not overkill. That, no, no, it's not. As long as you can keep up. As long as you understand the role of a mentor, it is not overkill. No. Here's the thing. We know that God wants us to launch out deeper with him. We know that, right? We know that God wants us to um, take risk in life as we're launching out in the deep with him, right? We know these very general things. God is a God of detail. What are the, what is blooming? What is blooming? That is very specific. That's very specific. What is blooming in this season? And so when you talk about the overall picture, right, there are many components that make up the overall picture. What component are you in right now? What component are you in right now? And honestly, when we have a moment, right, when we're not being busy doing whatever, busy doing life, when we have a moment, moment and we, we come to a quiet place for many of us, we don't know what God is wanting to, us to do or what God is wanting us to do in this season. And then, but then we're standing in prayer lines or we're getting prayer and there's nothing wrong with that because we really don't know what, what God is doing. We really don't know where the handprint of God is. Does this, is this making sense? And so then we get more prophecy. We get more prophecy. We get more prophecy, but then we still don't. Okay, thank you. I'm a prayer. I'm a pray. That's what I'm trying to see if I need to make two prayers tonight. All right. If you have, if you're taking notes, I need you to get out your pen and paper and I'm going to help you. And then I'm going to pray. I'm going to list some things for you to do in the presence of God. And then I'm going to pray over you concerning this thing. And then we're going to pray over the provision. But first we got to cover the vision guys. We've got, because I'm telling you, God has released so much provision, but we didn't know he released it because we didn't know that it was provision. It just looked like people. It just looked like stuff. It just looked like 
something that we looked over, but because we did not know where it was supposed to go, it had no value. So let's deal with the vision piece. And if you don't know what is blooming, what is blooming, meaning what the handprint of God is on and what he's calling you to do in this particular season, in this season, there are four seasons. Hey, boo. Hey, Nessa. There are four seasons to a year. So there are multiple seasons in our year. There are multiple seasons in our timeline, right? And so in this particular season, what is the handprint of God on? What is God saying that is blooming? And it could be God is saying for you to some people, it may be God is specifically saying for me to write the outline to my book. God is specifically saying for me to approach these people and you don't have to put their names in because we don't know them. These specific people, because they need, they have what I need and I'm supposed to sit up under them or I'm supposed to go and get a job here because of A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And it's little stuff. It's little stuff. When we talk in terms of operation management, that's one of the things that I do in my business. It is the day-to-day, hey, man of God, happy Father's Day. And it's the day-to-day things that get us to the big picture. What is the day-to-day things? And a lot of times it may feel like, well, the day-to-day things isn't going to get me money. The day-to-day things... The day-to-day things just look like nothing because they're so small. It is the small movements that make a big movement. It's the small movements, it's the small things that make the big thing. So what are the small things that God is saying that the blessing of the Lord is on? The blessing of the Lord is on some particular things in this season. And the provision is connected with the vision, the little things, the little things that God is saying for you. They're little. They're not big, huge, I'm supposed to write 15 volume book and it's going to become a movie in three months. Okay, cool. Cool. But let's backtrack a little bit. What's the outline? What's the outline? Who's going to help you? Who who has got paired you up with to help you flesh out these ideas? Right? Let me help you. If you have the framework, if you could just get with somebody to help you build the framework, you can do the rest. The framework is one of the most important pieces, if not the most important pieces to getting stuff out of the framework. Come here, Moses. God gave him the framework to the temple and Moses did the rest. Once he had the framework, once he had the framework, he could do the work. Once he had the framework, it's time for him to do the work. Then what did God release? The provision, the provision. You can see what this is for. Oh, I see what you were for. I understand why you're standing over there. I understand all of a sudden why I am at this 40 hour, this particular 40 hour. The last couple of scopes, I'm getting ready to take them down. Not maybe not yesterday, the day before, but the last, I'll put them out there. I'm getting ready to take them down. And it's talking about honoring your 40 hour, understanding that your 40 hour has purpose to your purpose. And so when we understand and don't begrudge the place that God has put your feet and understand that there's glory there, there's glory there, there's glory there. (laughs) When we understand that we begin to honor that, you're going to get so much more juice out of the 40 hour. Your 40 hour is not about a paycheck. It's not about a paycheck. It's not about a paycheck. It's about setting you up. It is about giving you a network. It's giving out of your 40 hour, God has put a network around you of people who will get you there. Even people who don't like you. We have to understand God loves using the people who don't like us to propel us. Understanding your network, right? But the framework. And so this is what I'm saying. If you, does everybody have their pen and paper? <laughs> this is the last couple of scopes. I, I don't remember the dates. Jesus help us in here today because I don't remember. Oh Lord. But I'm getting ready to take them down. All right. If you have pen and paper, let me help you understand that you already know what God is telling you to do. You already know. You're scared. You're scared. You're unsure. Let me help you. All right. If you have your pen and paper, say, I have it. I'm ready. Let's go. Let's do this. Let's go. Yes, it is. It is. It is. The SBA is an awesome, is an awesome place to start. It is. But not if you don't know what God is saying to do, right? 
There's a ton of resources, guys, out there, and we will, I will release to you resources, all sorts of resources, but I need you to know, I need you to lock jaws of what God is saying for you to do. <laughs> You're so funny. I need you to lock jaws. This is, this, when we get off the scope, I need you for real, for real, for real to perceive, this is what I'm supposed to be doing this season. This is where God has called my hand to do. I will not be shaken. I will not be moved from what God is saying. All right? All right. All right. Number one, when we, and y'all know I like to use the foundation of the scripture to lay the foundation, okay? When we look at Esther, when we look at Esther, right? God moves her into a place, you know, she's in the harem, she's getting ready to go, she gets all before the king, the king chooses her, she's now the queen, and then the real purpose comes in, right? And Mordecai sends her a note, and she says, she finds out that Mordecai is in the in the gate, in the square, he's sackcloth and ashes, he ain't got his clothes on, sackcloth, sackcloth and ashes, he's mourning, she sends him clothes, and she sends her excuse of why she can't go before the king, and make a plea for the Jewish people, Right? There's a moment of hesitation. That's number one. God is speaking something to you. And here's the thing. Let's, let, me, let me get all of this out of the way. How do I know if God is speaking to me? How do I know if this is the voice of God? <laughs> How do I know this is not myself? And, this, and I'm not trying to be God and blah, blah, blah. I'm squashing that right now in the name of Jesus in this realm. The place that you're hesitating. If, if, if I just said any of your excuses... God is speaking. I don't know if this is God. I don't want to miss God. I don't want to, I don't want to miss. Well, you're missing God, baby, only because you're not moving. You're missing him right there because you're not moving. Let me help you. <laughs> if you get lost, God will come find you. God will come find you. But the number one place, here's the thing. This is how we know if we are moving outside of the timing of God. Y'all ready? If I, I, how I find out if I'm moving outside of the timing of God is sometimes I become overzealous. I become overzealous and there is no caution. And usually when I begin to trace, why is there no, no caution? Why am I overzealous? It is tied to my ego. It's tied to my ego. And so usually I understand that God is saying to me, Anise, this is where we're going, but I'm showing you that if I was to propel you there now, you would edge me out. Ego, edge God out. You would edge me out because you're so on 10 about this and it's really not why you think. It's really, you're going there not because of the people you think you're going there. It's not going to yield what you think it's going to yield. This is going to be my ministry portion worked out and fleshed out through you. And a lot of times it's not going to feel good to your flesh, but it's going to feel good to your spirit. But I've got to get you there where we're going. And so God takes us on little trips so that when we get to the place, we won't lose him. When we get to the place, our character won't edge God out. When we get to the place, we can stick and stay and we can man the gate. We can man the gate, meaning nobody's going to push you off of your seat of authority because God is calling for us to be gatekeepers in this season. When you get there, God is saying, you need to man this gate until the day of Jesus Christ. You need to man this gate until I move you on and you approve, you approve of the next person who's going to come behind you and man the gate, meaning you're going to, you're going to be a, a, a person in an industry that is influencing an industry. You're going to be a person in ministry that is influencing the move of ministry, a kingdom person. And influencing the move of kingdom because I need you to man the gate. So there is going to be a certain type of anointing that has the same sound that's going to be manning the gate. Even as I push you through, the person behind you will sound like you, smell like you, look like you because it is an anointing. Does that make sense? It's an anointing. And so how I know that this is okay. God is saying this is for something for me to do. Let me help you. So God was saying to me, you need to get on Periscope for like over a year, over a year. And for one year, I did Gideon. For one year, I was hesitating. I'm telling you, that moment of hesitation, God speaks, it sounds good, and then you are like, oh my gosh. And you have every excuse in the book. As to why you can't do it, you have every excuse in the book of what you're waiting on. I see you, uh, woman of God. So Alexis is the one 
we used to kind of go back and forth about me getting on Periscope. She was like, Denise, why are you not on Periscope? <laughs> oh, because you know, I'm so busy. <laughs> I got so many things to do. <laughs> and then she was like, Anise, Anise, Anise. And then finally it was like, Anise, I need you to get on Periscope because of blah, 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 blah. It's a non-negotiable. And so because I was a part of her vision, hear me when I say this. I was a part of her vision. I had to submit. God finally got to me. Yep. God finally got me to a place where I had no, <laughs> me too, boo. Me, oh, I said boo. Me too, love. He finally got me to a place where I had to submit. When you serve another man's vision, you must submit. That's why the 40 hour is so amazing to us because it breaks us. It makes us serve. It makes us show up in excellence. And that's allowing us to see what kind of people God is going to send us. When we get there, and that he can trust us to go there. So we got to a place where I had to submit, and I had to do it. Even in the place, I said, okay, Alexis, I'm doing it. I had the account set up. Y'all, I was tripping. I do public speaking for a living. I, I sell public speaking. It was something about getting on this dumb camera, sitting here looking at myself, looking at this wall, praying and prophesying over people I cannot see that I was like a deer caught in headlights. I was tripping. I had so many excuses. Ding, 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 ding. That's what you're supposed to be doing, Dr. Kim. That is what you're supposed to be doing. This is where the hand of God is. This is what's in bloom this season. The hesitation. Come here, Gideon, man of mighty valor. Hesitate. 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 A ton of excuses. Oh, this was nice. I gotta, I gotta make, I gotta get my content matrix, you know, because I do marketing. I gotta get my content matrix and I've got to get it all together. What man doesn't sit down and count up all the costs before he begins to do something? Excuses, 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 because God is saying, this is a place where I will give you the framework. This is the place where I will give you the framework. Periscope is not like my business. Periscope is by the spirit of God. It is not my business. And even in my business, mm -hmm, even in my business, we, there, it is still ministry. And God, there's doses of the anointing. And then in my business, there are doses of me getting it and arranging it and making it proper. But when it comes to this, what God was saying, Anise, I need you to get on. This is what I need you to do. I was fighting. But, oh God, I've got to do this. I've got to get my matrix together. I've got to sit down and really, you know, it's got to be perfect. It's got to be right. And God is saying, it'll never be perfect. It'll never be right because it's got to be me. <laughs> it's got to be me. Yep. 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 That was me. Make it proper. And so where you are right now, on your piece of paper, that place that you are on the struggle bus. God is saying, I need you to do this. God is saying, I need you to show up. God is saying, I need you to knock on that door. God is saying, I need you to put your resume in. God is saying, I need you to go back to school. God is saying, I need you to call that number again. I need you to get up with that person again. This is what I need you to do. And you are hesitating. Eureka, you've hit diamonds. You've hit gold. This is what is in blue. This is what is blooming. Yep. And the only way to do it, baby, is to do it. The only way to do it is to do it. That's the only way. That's the only way. Yep. And can I help you? Can I help you? I bless God for the places of hesitation. I do. I do, I do, I do, I do. Yes, just do it. That's the only way to do it is to do it. Bless the Lord. And there's still going to be the feelings of inadequacy. There's still hear me are you listening <laughs> there's still going to be feelings of imposter syndrome I, I shouldn't be here i don't i don't belong here i have it i don't have the credentials to be here all of those things are still going to be there and they need to be because that makes sure i'm not going to edge god out that that makes sure i've got to be before god the whole ride that this makes sure that this really is the god ride that i am I am, uh, 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 I need, I have need of him. I have need of him. And the only way that this is going to work, <laughs> God, if you don't do this, it's not going to work. So when you go to the business side of things, 
right? I go to the business side of things. I'm degreed up. I have all these degrees. I've done this thing. I go around the country. I do this. I do this. So there's a level of Anise can do this. Anise has done this. Anise, Anise, Anise. And God is saying, but I pulled out Periscope because you didn't understand in the business side of it because I'm called to the marketplace. On the business side of it, I'm going to propel you to places that you may be. You don't belong. You don't look like them. You don't sound like them. So I just, I just went to, um, I just went to uh, Chicago. And it's where I do PD in the educational realm with technology coaches. And that was totally outside of my scope. I didn't know anything about K through 12, you know. So I've been doing this for about, you know, two or three years. I sell people on public speaking, on project management, students, teachers, all this stuff. So I get to Chicago. I'm the only black person on the team. I'm the only black person all three days in all of the sessions. Does it matter? It does. It does. Because I felt I, I, I have, I've got to be able to reach back to a place that says, okay, God. All right, God. I'm the one that looks different. I have a different sound. I have a different sound. I just do. I have a different sound. And I'm not in their arena. I'm not K through 12. I teach college, but I'm not K through 12. That's a whole nother beast. K through 12 is a whole nother beast. They have a whole different mindset. They're like a little gang, honestly. Teachers are like a little gang. If you're a teacher on here, you like a little gang. Y'all can be, you know what I'm saying? They know their stuff. They're, they, you're, you're, you're taking three days from them and telling them things that they already know. Honestly, you're telling them things that they already know. So, so I go in there. I'm the only black person on the team that I go with. Yes. And, and as beautiful and wonderful as they are, you better come with it. And now I'm the only black person in the room. I got some of the highest remarks, the highest feedback that I've ever gotten in my whole three years doing this. It was because I had to go back to Periscope and I had to, I had to let go of, I've been doing this for three years. I had to let go of, I'm qualified to do this. I had to let go of all that and I had to go back to the space of, okay, God. All right, God, you're going to have to, you're going to have to tear down some barriers. You, they don't have to see you. They're going to have to, you know what I'm saying? And so I bless God for the challenging places. And this is what I need you to do when on your sheet. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Do me when I say this. What God is calling you to do in this season, guys, what the, the handprint, your whole life, your whole life, your whole life. But we're talking about this season. Yes. Yes. We're talking about this particular season. What God is calling you to do. It's really, he's calling himself to do it through you. You're just the vehicle. You're just along for the ride. You're just the vehicle. And so sometimes God will call you and to do something that's so much bigger than you because some of us, we will get in and we're like, okay, I can do this. Let me put my hand in it. Let me do it. I got a plan, God. Let me help you, God. Let me help you. Let me, I would do it like this, God. I know these people. Let me help you. And God is like, no, I don't need your help. <laughs> I don't need your help. I just need a vehicle. Who will go for us? Who will go for us? And so you've got to, your soul has got to make its boast in God. And you've just got to realize in that place of hesitation, not the, not fear, not fear. It's hesitation. It's hesitation. And that place of hesitation. All right, God, you're using me because you want to put your glory in this thing or on this place. You want people to see you. You've got something you want to say to a particular place, a particular people who have a particular purpose. Cool. I'll go. I'm just the vehicle. And so when it comes, can I help you? Can I just be transparent? When it comes to Periscope, I have, yes, I read, I'm a teacher. I have the teaching gift by nature, blah, blah, blah. But the content is all God. The content it's all God. I don't have to labor and make content matrices like before. I was like, I gotta make a matrix. This is what I'm gonna talk about Monday. And this is what I'm gonna I'm gonna have a series. I'm gonna have a series on faith and a series on grace. And, a se and God is like, no, ma'am, you're not gonna have a series on anything. You're gonna show up, you're gonna turn on the camera, and I'm gonna start speaking. And it's so amazing. The responsibility has, it's, it's just, it's off of me. Yes, I still have to pray and I still have to worship. <laughs> I still have to serve God, you know what I mean? But the, this, you guys, we feel this burden of having to perform. And God is saying, no, 
When you perceive, come here, David, and David perceived, right? When you perceive that this is where I'm putting your hand and my hand is on top of your hand. So really, I'm putting my hand on top of this thing. That's when the glory is released. That's when the provision is released. That's when the plans are released. Esther didn't have, Esther was not going to get a plan on how to get before the king and how to expose Haman until she was like, all right, let's do this. If I die, I die. Let's do it. I'm in it to win it. On your piece of paper, and you don't have to type it in if you don't want to, but I, I need some people to be froggy. I need some people just to walk in a loud courage right now. What is the thing that God, you've been hesitating and you've got a million excuses about that the handprint of God is on? What is it? What is it? Write it down. When you write it down, when you write it down, we're getting ready to pray. You in it to win it. You all in, baby. And then I'm going to be praying from me praying about the release of provision, the provision to surround the vision, the provision, the people. The people, okay? Going back to school specific. Anessa, what is the school, baby? What is the school? Be specific. God is a God of very, very particular in details. He's very detailed. We serve a very detailed God. Go there. Go there. You will be here again. Next season, God, this, this journey of <gasps> never stops. <laughs> <laughs> really God it's never gonna stop it's never gonna stop and God is just looking for some people need okay we're praying for you we're praying for that century okay 30k I'm writing that down God is looking for some people who will who will just kind of for lack of a better word while out while out before I'm gonna say I'm ready I don't know enough about what he wants me to say to empower to encourage that okay we're getting ready to pray if you're in it it's gonna come you do know enough can, can I can I go off on another tangent for like one second? Can I help you just for like one second? I'm going to help you for one second. I need you to remember this. If you don't take anything else from this scope, if you don't take anything else from any scopes or anywhere or whatever, I need you to remember this one thing, and this is biblical, and I need you to go look in your scripture, and I need you to prove that this is the word of the Lord. And the word of the Lord for you is, and the thing Number one, you are only here to fulfill a specific purpose. God has a garden that's already prepared. God made the garden and he poured Adam into it. God made the garden and then he gave the garden Adam. He made the garden and then he gave the garden Adam because Adam had the answers, the miracles, the decrees for the garden. So that the garden could multiply, so that it could flourish, so that the animals could multiply, so that the animals could flourish, right? Right? It's the same with you. It's the same with you. There is a garden, there is a place that is always, that is already prepared. God poured you into it because in your mouth, in your belly, is the wisdom and the knowledge to sustain and to cause this thing that you're called to, the place, the people, and the purposes, to flourish. When God brought the animals before Adam, he told, he told Adam to name them. The Bible never says that Adam sat in college and he learned how to name animals 101. That he understood <laughs> the, the, you know, how the functions of ecosystems and he had to sit through chemistry, biology class, um, anatomy, so that he could understand the functions of animals and how it relates to ecosystems. He bought the animals by him and Adam knew, he knew, he knew what to name them. He knew what to do. He knew it. Why? Because, let me help you. When God breathed into it, we have a whole scope on this. I don't know what the name of it is, so oh well. But I need you to look this up for yourself. Look it up for yourself. Look it up in Hebrew for yourself. When God formed 
when he formed, not created, when he formed Adam, it's two different things, he blew his breath, that's what the Bible says, right? Blew his breath into Adam. It is not Ruach. It's not Ruach. This breath is divine, divine inspiration and divine intellect. That's what he blew into Adam. <sighs> divine intellect and divine inspiration. When the Bible says that Adam, God met with Adam in the cool, that's the Ruach. That word is Ruach cool of the evening that's ruach that was spirit of god but the breath of god was not the ruach it was the divine intellect on the inside of you is this divine intellect that is tailor-made for the place that you're to be poured out in and there's some things in you baby let, let let's look at this from a from a very secular analytical side if you will you're only using five percent of your brain what would happen if another two percent of your brain was activated what would you know hmm what would you be able to see what will be what dots will be able to be connected What's going on on the inside, hey woman of God, what's going on on the inside of you, the rivers, the rivers, the rivers that are on the inside of you. Here's the thing, God blew his breath in him and then Adam met with God in the Ruach. And I believe that when, this is key, that when we meet it with God in the spirit, in the Ruach of God, we get divine, in, we get divine intel. We get divine intel. So that's why when my customers, when my clients deal with me, yes, they're mostly secular people. I'm not giving them the word of the Lord. I'm not prophesying over them like this is the word of the Lord for you. I'm doing it, but they don't understand that I'm doing it. I have divine intel about where they're going because I spend time with God in the Ruach about them. I spend time with God about them and God tells me, call that a cow call that a giraffe, call that a sheep, and then tell them. So here's the thing, and at number one, you, what's on the inside of you will be activated once you say yes, once you for real, for real, make a decision. Once you bestow yourself and you say, all right, this is what God is saying for me to do. This is what is blooming. Yes, this is what God, where God's hand, I'm good. This is what God says that he wants me to be doing. This is it. A lot of times we kind of fall back. A lot of times we're like this petty humility. Yes, I said it's petty humility because it's not real humility. Well, you know, I don't know. You know, I kind of feel like, I kind of feel like. That's not humility. That's not humility, baby. It's okay for you to say that God has called my business to be a multinational company, that I will be in at least three or four different countries, and I will employ this many people because I understand I am a distribution center in the earth, and I incubate, I hold space for the saints of God while they are getting their lives together, while they are getting their vision together, they will have a, jet, a job, they will have a paycheck. That's what I do. I man this gate. And that's okay to say that. That's not pride. That's your calling, right? It's pride when you begin to say, I don't need God. I did this. I'm self-made. I'm so, no, 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 boo, stop. No, you're not self-made. You're not self-anything, right? You are here to fulfill. You are a distribution center. That's what you are. And we need you to get in place. And so we need you to honor. We need you to say, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm called. I was built for this. Did you catch it? Adam was built for the garden. Adam was built for the garden. He was built for this. It was natural. It was normal. It was good. When you begin to walk in those places of your purposes and your potential becoming released, you become alive. You just know things. It's almost like, yep. It's almost like, it's like, oh, I just met this person. Oh, and then they started telling me this. And it was like, information comes to you. Classes come to you. The things that you need will just come to you. And it'll just be like, oh my gosh, I'm in this season. Because all of a sudden, it's like, it's like magnetizing. Everything just comes together. And it's just, it's just like you're running faster and faster and faster. But you're alive. You're alive. We've got to stop this start and stop, start and stop, stop, start and stop. We've got to stop that. Yes, you were, you were built 
for this. And so whatever you wrote down on your paper, you were built for this in this season. You were built for it. You were built for learning in this season. You were built to create in this season. You were built to blog in this season. You were built for it. You were built to get funding in this season. You were built in this season. In your mouth are the right questions. In your mouth, you have the answers. In your mouth, you have the marketer's mouth. No, no, it's not. <laughs> no. You were built for this. You were built to do this. There is an, a unique anointing. And come on. When the Egyptian women, and I know I said it's not women, but I have to use this because it was Bible. When the Egyptian women went to, or the Israelite women went to the Egyptian women, why would the Egyptian women give them their valuables? Because they were saying, I'm on them. I, I can't help but give you this. I can't help but release this on you. I need to get you out of here. I need to get you away from me. What is it you want? What is it? And I've been praying over people, this whole petty cash thing, that there's some people who've got some petty cash and your name is on it. And pet, their, their petty cash and their petty cash and their petty cash equals your blessing. Yes. So, you know, some of us, you know, I feel, I feel kind of funny asking people for money. I feel kind of funny, you know, going to, you know, this person and saying, hey, this is what I need and this is my proposal and I feel funny. I don't I don't know if I've got the juice. And yes, you've got the juice because the juice of God is on you. Yes, 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 yes. But you have to acknowledge. You've got to perceive. You've got to join. You've got to come in harmony with the will of God over your life in this season, for this season. All I do is take it season by season by season, day by day by day. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, over your people, number one, the people who are sitting here and they have their piece of paper and they have their pen and they are just in a place of God. All right. Tell it to me one more time. Just just tell it to me one more time. What would you have me to do? Not even for the rest of my life, not even asking you, God, for my overall purpose, because I understand that's not biblical. But I'm asking you, what would you how what need do you have for me now? What do you want me to be doing now? I'm saying to you, Father, as their intercessor, I'm standing in the gap for all 43 people on this scope right now. And I'm saying to you, Father, on their behalf, God, tell them one more time. God, they will not relent. God, they will not hesitate. Yes, they may feel some kind of way in their emotions. Yes, they may feel some kind of way in their emotions, but their emotions will not rule them. Their emotions will not overrule you. Their emotions will not outlast you. But God, you're making them sturdy in the place of their soul called their courage. There's a seat of your soul called courage. And so I'm praying, God, and I'm, I'm decreeing over the seat of their soul, courage, that in this season, that they'll get up and they don't need all the plans. They'll walk in courage and they don't need all the details. They'll walk in courage and they'll be obedient. And they won't, every step of the way, they won't be saying, okay, God, what next? Or, okay, God, I'm not going to move until you tell me. I'm not going to move. But they will see the ten lepers and they will hear the voice of Christ saying... Go show yourself. Go show yourself to the priest. And when you look down at yourself, you still have leprosy. And it was while they were going, while they were moving, they were healed. It, they were healed. While they were moving in the obedience. And so, God, as their intercessor, I'm standing in the gap for them. And I'm saying that this, 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 this is a season of divine obedience. This is a season that, God, when you say do it, we will do it. We will do it because we're not stepping out on faith. We're stepping out on worship. We're stepping out on worship. We're stepping out on worship. God, my obedience is me saying to you, God, God, I worship you. My obedience is saying to you, God, it's not about me. It's about you. My obedience is saying, God, I decrease so that you can increase. Obedience is my worship. I will do it. And I won't look at men in their faces because I'm looking at you and yours. It's my worship. It's my worship. It's my worship. I'm not doing this by faith. I'm doing this by worship. I'm doing this by worship. I'm not doing this by praise. I'm doing this by worship. I'm doing this by worship. I'm doing this by worship. I'm stepping out on worship, Elanda, and I'm going to go to uh, the open calls and I'm going to speak and I'm going to go to things, Elanda, this is for you. I'm going to go to places that say you need to have this. You should have been in this. You, we need this and you ain't got none of it. You shouldn't be there. That your name will be amongst uh, uh, names that are would be celebrity names that you will say, God, I'm not doing this by faith. I'm doing it because of worship. I understand that you have need to put your glory here. It's not about me. It's not about my presence showing up, God. It's about your presence showing up. And God, I want your 
presence in every gate. I want your presence in every wall. I want your presence in every mountain. I want your presence at every door. And so God, I'm stepping out on worship. And so I stretch out on the altar of God tonight for your people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I say, God, your people, and this season, this is about you. This is the generation that will seek your face, O Jacob. This is the generation that is saying, God, we're doing this. Our lives belong to you. Our lives, everything about us, everything that we do, every trip that we shall go on, that God, this is about you and it's not about us. Stepping out on worship. I'm stepping out on worship. And so, Father, I thank you that tonight over this weekend that you will begin to release the instruction. And it will be undeniable that God is speaking. Hallelujah. I, I quiet every other voice that competes with the voice of God over the next three days. Every voice that competes with the voice of God. I silence that voice with the blood of Jesus. This is a season where you must hear God. You must hear the instruction of God because you're going to have to go. You're going to have to do it. It's time to cross over into and so, God, even over this weekend, if that means that they don't, uh, they, they don't go certain places, they don't answer certain phone calls, they don't listen to certain music, they don't watch certain things on TV because of the competing voices, so shall it be according to your word for your people in the name of Jesus. This takes precedence. This, we feel the urgency to know what you want us to do. We feel the urgency to know. We feel the urgency, God, because we're stepping out on worship. And so I'm praying over, even over their dreams, that even in their dreams, that, they, that there will be a pe uh, peculiar uh, dreaming for people who have open visions. I'm praying that you would have open visions about this thing, that it will be undeniable that this is God speaking. It will be undeniable because it will shake you at your core. And I'm praying that, and I'm, I'm giving you the instruction to write it down. Write down what God is saying. And even though it may not have the instruction tied to it, it may not have every detail tied to it, so what? So what? So what? I don't need to know every detail. I have you, God. I don't need to know every piece of, of what's next. I don't need to know it because all I need is you. You're good enough. If you tell me to go, I'll be led by your spirit. It's all good. Undeniable. And so I'm speaking peace in your households. I'm speaking peace. I'm speaking peace between you and your kids and you and your spouse. I'm speaking peace. I'm speaking peace. I'm speaking peace. I'm speaking there will not be any uprising to this word. There will not be any uprising to what God is doing in your life. God is releasing to you the pieces to now. The pieces. The pieces. The pieces to now in Jesus' name. So we're speaking peace. And so now I'm getting ready to pray over you. Prayers of prosperity. I am using, I'm on page, I'm going to be looking at page 87. If you have your pen and paper out, when, when we're praying, you need to write down what God is saying. You got, let me help you before I get back. I'm still praying. Y'all understand that? I'm still in intercession even though I'm talking to you. Yeah. Intercession ain't what we think it is. It's more than that. It's more than that. And so even while I'm talking to you, I'm giving you instruction. We are still in intercessory prayer. When we're praying tonight, when I say we, it's because we, it is not Anise. This is not the Anise show. This is the God show. And it is all of us. It takes all of us to pray this thing out. It takes all of us participating to get it, the will of God fleshed out for all of us, for all of us. And so when you're sitting there and you're praying and you're typing things in, write down what God is saying. Write it down. Do not miss what God is saying. I always tell people, I pray with pen and paper. I always pray with pen and paper. Why? Because prayer is about him speaking. It's not about me speaking. It's about what he's saying. And I need him to reveal things I've never heard before. I need him to say things that I've never heard before. I need him to tell me scripture that I need to go and flesh out and I need to pray through. And so, Father, speak to us now in terms of the provision. And so for every person with their pen and paper, every person with their notepad up on their phone, God, I thank you that they hear your voice. 
Hallelujah. We, we see you preparing for track and field Olympics 2020. We're praying for you, woman of God. We're praying for you in the name of Jesus. We're praying for, um, for, for coaches. We're praying for money. We're praying because, you know, you have to, you got to move around to go to camp so that you can, you know, work out. And then you even have to do races, right? Don't you have to like do races up until 2020? That's how you get your ranking, right? That's how we know where we are in the races. Yep. We're praying that for the release. And here's the thing. Here's the competition. Thank you. Competitions. Here's the thing. Woman of God. Hallelujah. Y'all pray for her. We are praying. We are praying. We are praying for your body. We are praying for your body. We're praying the same way. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That when Esther went to the harem, the dude who kept the harems gave Esther favor. We're praying that there's going to be people on your team in your, in your training realm and that you are going to have the best of care for your body. You're going to have the best doctors, the best people who are caring for your body in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, that your body will not break down in any shape, form, or fashion. That we're praying for every system in your body. That you will have never ran this fast in your life. We're praying for the technique and how you run. We're praying for your stride and how you run. We're praying for even your mindset. Because in competition, it's all about the mindset. We're praying that you have a winner's mindset, that you have a racer's mindset. We're praying that other uh, people, competitors, that they will meet with God when they meet with you, woman of God, that there will be such a ministry portion as you travel around the world and run and run. We're praying for the feet of the harvester, but we're praying for the hands of the harvester too, that people will meet with God as they meet with you in locker rooms, as they meet with you, as you guys share houses, as they meet with you on airplanes, that they will meet with God and that Muslims will know God, that Hindu people will know God, that refugees will meet with God, that people from Japan and China will meet with God, that Americans will meet with God. And then when they leave your presence, they will be saved, sanctified and filled with the spirit of God in the name of Jesus. We're praying for you. Hallelujah. 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 So we're praying for provision. We're praying for the provision. And so God, we bless you. God, we thank you. God, we honor you. Hallelujah. As you are releasing vision on the one hand, you are releasing provision on the other hand. Hallelujah. God, we thank you. That uh, according to the dream last night, according to the dream that or yesterday, the scope, the dream, hallelujah. And you took us through Acts chapter 16, that what we've been warring with at the door, the spirit that we've been warring with at the door, that seems like we open doors, the prophetic word, open doors, open doors, open doors everywhere. And we get to the door and it still seems to be closed. And we've been warring against an echo, warring against an echo. We thank you, God, that as we get rooted in our vision, as we get rooted in the thing that you're saying is blue that whatever the demon at the desk that's what they call it in deliverance the demon at the desk that's what they call it in deliverance when you get to a place and it seems like there's a person at the desk business we call it a gatekeeper too you get to the person at the desk and they just won't let you they're giving you a hard time they're making you jump through hoops it's like no 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 is their only word and you're like i don't know what this is i don't know what is going on the demon at the desk thank you god as we get rooted in the vision that the wind of God comes and blows that demon out the desk on. That the, the echo, the echo, the echo has to go in Jesus' name. The echo, the echo, hallelujah. Because we understand that when we are operating, when we say yes to the vision of God, when we say yes, when we sign on, when we walk in harmony with you, that the spirit of God comes before us. The spirit of God envelops us. The spirit of God moves before us and you become, hallelujah, Jehovah, our warrior, the Lord of hosts. You will war for us as you get yourself through the door. We are just the vehicle. The responsibility is on you in the name of Jesus. And so now we speak over every connection we speak over every connection in every network that is standing at the door we release hallelujah people in networks every person that is involved in the process of the vision every person who is involved and they will be part of the provision every human resource we pray for them now in the name of jesus 
Even if they're our, our arch enemy, we pray for them in the name of Jesus. We pray for them. We pray for them. We pray, God, because in their pockets, they have our provision. In their pockets, they have a seed for us. In their pocket. And so we're praying for them. We thank you, God, that because we have favor with you and we sit in a seat of authority with you, that we sit in a seat of authority in the earth and that we have favor with them, God, in the name of Jesus. This is a season where we cannot be denied. This is a season that as we march in vision we cannot be denied and so we put on the undeniable fact that our provision must say yes our provision must say yes to us that as we leave one place we are going to the next place and we are plundering we are taking we are pillaging mm -mm -mm. we are pillaging the places hallelujah that we are coming from because of what's in our hand we must build we must distribute in the next place and so we thank you for people ready, readily giving us information, information. That's number one, what we're going to pray for information that people will give us the inside information that people just won't give us the, the framework of information, but they will drop names. They will drop places. They will give email addresses. They will give phone numbers. They will give us good information. They will give us information. When we ask for it the first time, they will give it to us in the name of Jesus. People will email us with information. People will Facebook us with information. We say that we are information uh, uh, receivers. Streams of information are coming to us in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Information. 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 Some of us feel like we're locked out because we don't know. It's like, we, we who, how do we get it? Where do we go? What, what's up? Who's the person? Well, this is the season that when we say yes, when we're rooted in the vision, information, 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 revelation, revelation, revelation. We, we speak and we declare over this information that you will get meetings the first time. You will get the meeting the first time that God is going on. Um, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit, that God will release on you a wisdom in your wording, wisdom in your wording for every person that is uh, um, creating a business plan and a proposal, wisdom in your wording, wisdom in your wording. I'm praying that God will anoint your words, that people will be drawn to you and how you phrase the phrases you use in your in your uh, your your emails, the phrases you use on your resume, the phrases you use in the proposals. We're praying. We're praying over that. We're praying over every proposal that will be released in this season. Every proposal, every business plan for that is being built to get money, to get funding, that it will be it will be it will be prepared with wisdom, with wisdom, with wisdom. That God, you would give them the divine framework to scale. You would give them the divine framework. And the person at the end user, the end user for the grant, the end user who's getting the proposal, they will see how it will make sense because it's, it's laid out so plain. It's laid out so plain. And so God, I'm even praying over your people, the people who don't understand the financial side of it. When you do a proposal, when you have a business plan, when you're, their numbers matter, the numbers matter. And this is a season where we're not having to make up numbers. We're not going to, we're not going to fudge our way through the numbers. No, that God will give you, he will hook you up. He will hook you up with people who will teach you how to do the numbers and they will do the numbers with you. I'm praying that God will give you a team. That God would give you a team. That God would, like we did a scope on this, that God will, he will send leaves to help you bear fruit. He will send people leaves to help you bear fruit. And that they will readily, they'll say, okay, you know what? But yeah, send me your financials. I'll show you how it works. I'll do a financials for five years, 10 years, and 15 years. Yep, yep, five years, 15 years. I, I'll do it for you. And they will, item by item, line by line, it'll make, it'll make sense. And that you will know how to do it going forward. Even if you don't do it, you will know how to do it going forward. Nothing will be fudged on your proposals and your business plans. The information will not have any errors and that you will gain a uh, favor with people because they will understand, you know what? They took the time and they did it correctly. This is a season where what you do, the information that you put out will be done correctly. It will be completed in correct uh, correctly. And so father over your people. Now we speak and we declare in Jesus name. 
when it comes to uh, writing. Uh, people who say, I don't like writing proposals. I don't do, I don't like the technical writing. I don't understand a lot of it. I'm praying God that you would open up the eyes of their understanding when it comes to this business venture, that you would open up the eyes of their understanding God for what you're having them to put their hands on in the name of Jesus, that God, they would just get it. For people who say, I'm not good at math, we rebuke that in Jesus' name. And we say, for this baby, you get it. Ease of use handling this thing. We're taking out the anxiety where people would back up because they feel like, you know what? I don't get this. I don't understand this. I don't even want to do this part of it. And so it's causing them to not even do it right. It's causing them to back up. You, God is not going to put you with people who are going to take advantage of you. He's not going to put you with people who are going to steal your money. He's not going to put you with people that the IRS is going to come after you. Not in this season. But you wait, head, head, you going to have to face this thing head on. Believing, believing in the, the divine intellect and the divine inspiration. It's in you. It's in you. So God activate it. Activate the places in their learning that they didn't even know that was even there. Activate it. Activate it. Activate it. Wherever you are, lift your hands and say, okay, God, activate me. Activate me in the places of intellect and information. Activate me in the places if it's, I don't like to write, activate me. Activate me if it's math and I don't like it, activate me, master. I'm saying, yes, Lord. I'm saying, God, I want to do this thing 100%. I want to do this thing in excellence. I want to do this thing with the grace and by the glory of God, activate me. No more will I walk around saying, I don't know how to do it. No more will I walk around saying, I don't know how. I don't know what next. I don't know what to do. I don't get it. No more. That is not my testimony because God, if the spirit of God is on the inside of me, then I have the knowledge the wisdom and the know-how and I thank you father for bringing me to teachers bringing me to people who will flesh it out and pull it out of me but I'm saying yes to the anointing yes to the anointing yes to the anointing yes to the anointing to do this thing and everything that comes with it yes to the anointing yes to the anointing yes to the anointing in Jesus name in Jesus name. And so God, we thank you for the preparation with wisdom. We thank you, Father. We thank you, God, for the for the release of people giving information to us. We're not going to have to fight for the information. We are not going to you are not going to have to fight your way through the door. Write that down. I need you to write that down. Whatever you're writing down, this is what you're going to have to post. Post in your offices, post in your cubicles, put, you know, the visor in your, in your car, put sticky notes up there and tape them up there. And when you look up, you you say out of your mouth what it says. This is not a season where you're going to have to fight your way through the door. This is not a season where you will have to fight your way into the, uh, the industry. This is not a season. You're going to go in. You're going to go in with courage. You're going to, yes, you're going to go in with understanding. You're going to go in. You're going to go in. And when you show up, you're going to have favor. I don't know how long this is. Here's the thing. We have levels of favor. Can I help you guys? Can I help you guys? When Joseph was in the pit, he had favor. When Joseph was at Potiphar's house, he had favor. When Joseph was in the prison, he had favor. When Joseph was in the palace, he had favor. Even though it was places he did not want to be, he still had favor. He still had favor because there was only one road to the palace. And so the whole road was favorable. The whole road had favor steeped all over it. Favor, 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 right? Okay, so when you have levels of favor, right? When, you have, when you're in places with levels of favor, there's a window for that favor. There's a window for that particular outpouring of favor. And so we're talking, I'm, I'm praying specifically over the favor to get through these doors. I hope I'm helping y'all. The favor to, you're not, the favor, can you move too slow? No. Yes and no. Yes and no. Here's the thing. Can I, I know I'm still praying. I'm still interceding. You, we only move too slow when we're not moving. You only move too slow when you're not moving. You only move too slow when you're not moving. And that, that, that place of hesitation, that's when you're missing it. That's when you're missing it. It's when you're hesitating. That's when you're missing it. Even if you're moving and you're scared, keep moving, keep moving moving. I don't care how scared you are. I don't care if you got to move and you cry. I don't care if you got to move and you throw up. I don't care if you move and you pee on yourself. Keep moving. Keep moving. Don't stop. 
Keep moving. One foot in front of the other. Keep moving. Because every time you move, you're gaining ground. Every time you move, you're gaining momentum. Every time you move, you're gaining courage. Don't stop moving. Keep moving. The only time when you're missing God is when you're not moving. And here's the thing. Well, Anise, what happens if I'm moving in the wrong direction? You keep moving and know this. Know this. The Holy Spirit will come and move you back. The Holy Spirit will come and move you back. The Holy Spirit will come and move you back. Keep moving. Keep moving. Don't stop. Keep moving. It doesn't matter what it looks like in front of you. It doesn't matter. What, what, come on, come here, Nehemiah. They, they, they came to him, they said, hey, look, your enemies sent this. This is what they're going to do. Nehemiah, he moved into the presence of God. He moved and he showed God. And he said, okay, God, what do you want me to do? God said, he took it out of the presence of God. And he kept building. Keep moving. Don't look at men in their faces. Keep moving. Even when the answer is no, keep moving. Keep moving. Keep moving. We've got the time out for the season where we, we move a little bit and it doesn't go our way. And then we stop and we throw a temper tantrum and we go in the presence of God and we accuse God and we say we're not going to do it anymore. Keep moving. Keep moving. Keep moving. You hear me? Today I got some news and it was crazy. It was cool. Crazy. It was crazy. And so I was sitting there and for a minute I wanted to get into my analytics. You know, I wanted to sit there and I wasn't saying anything out of my mouth and I was just thinking in my head and it was crazy and it was crazy. And for me, Anise, I have to be careful. I have to take a moment because I'm known to throw temper tantrums, epic temper tantrums. I'm just being honest. Epic, epic. And so I sat there, I sat there, but I, I, what I didn't understand is that God has broken off of me that crazy temper tantrum crap. He has broken it off of me. So I'm sitting there and the Holy Spirit the whole time, you know, I'm sitting there and I'm thinking about this information. The Holy Spirit is doing this to me. He's like pushing me. Like, what are you going to do? What are you going to do with the Holy Spirit? He's like, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? You're just going to say, you're going to take this. You're going to take this. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? pushing me? And I got up and I began to worship. I begin to worship and I begin to tell God that no matter what I just heard, no matter the news I just got, it doesn't negate the fact that you're still God. It doesn't diminish your power. It doesn't take anything away from you. It doesn't make any of your word less potent. You are still God. The throne belongs to you. Why? Because you built the throne. The throne has to worship you and bow down because you're God. I got up. The Holy Spirit pushed me into a place, pushed me into a place that I got up under that weight and I kept moving and I kept moving and I kept moving. We've got to stop whenever we get news, whenever we get a letter about our enemies are coming for us where we just like, oh no, oh no, what am I going to do? God, but you said, God, but you said, but God, you promised, you promised and it's not going down the way you promised. Ah, stop it. You just lost ground. Stop it. And even though you pick yourself up and you repent and you brush yourself off, you still lost ground. We got to be strategic. We got to be strategic. We got to be strategic. The truth is you're going to get news. The truth is weapons are going to be formed. The truth is the enemy's not going to stop. The truth is you're always sometimes going to feel small. I do. Let me speak for me. That's the truth. That's the truth. Sometimes I show up in places and I feel like I shouldn't be here. That's the truth. That, and it's not going to stop. So instead of me looking at me, 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 I don't feel, I don't feel, I don't feel. This is what I feel like. I turn and I put my sight on God. That's my strategy. My strategy is to amplify God. My strategy is to make God bigger. My strategy is to make my soul boast in him. That's my strategy because I'm not losing ground in this season. I'm not losing ground this time. I'm not losing ground this time. By hook or by crook, I'm going to keep moving. I'm going to keep moving. I'm going to keep moving. I'm going to cry and I'm going to move. I'm I'm going to yell, but I'm going to keep moving. I'm going to cry, but I'm going to keep moving. Keep moving. Keep moving. Yes, keep moving. And here's the thing. Just because you're about to see the provision and you, the vision are going to come together and it's something to, ooh, it's all coming together. You have to understand that when that sound happens, it's a sound. When that sound happens, there is going to be weaponry that is released against you. So what? So what? Keep moving. So what? That is a sign that you're on the right track. That is a sign that you're onto something powerful. That's a sign that you've hit gold. That's a sign that God is with you. You would not be attacked if God wasn't with you. You would not be attacked if you weren't onto something big. You would not. Keep moving. Keep moving. Keep moving. Keep moving. Keep moving. Keep moving. With all the weights, you keep moving. 
Y'all hear me? Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm going to yell at you. <laughs> Keep moving. Okay. And so, Father, I thank you that you even energize them in this season for those of us who are inclined to throw tantrums, for those of us who are inclined that when we get disappointed, we go nuts. This is a season where we will not be disappointed. Even if it's not going our way, we will not be disappointed. Even if it's, we, we see that we're in a Potiphar's house situation, we will not be disappointed. We will put on strategy. We will put on strategy. We will put on strategy. We are still walking in favor. We are still walking in purpose. We are still walking in potential. We cannot be stopped. We are immovable in Jesus' name. You are immovable in Jesus' name. You are immovable in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And so, Father, I thank you that you're making them weighty in the spirit. I thank you, God. I thank you, God, that when they see the weapons, when they see the shenanigans coming against them, they won't be moved. That they will keep moving and that they will keep moving and that they will keep moving and that they will be keep moving. You're immovable. You're unstoppable. Why? Because you've made a decision. You've made a decision. One of my favorite passages of scripture, and I'm, I'm releasing this over you, and I may not get to the book today because I have no idea how long we've been on. But when you hear, when, when God was giving David strategy because he had had to come up against the Philistines again in the Valley of Giants again, and he got strategy, he said to David, he said, when you hear the marching and the tops of the mulberry trees, bestir yourself. When you hear the marching in the tops of the mulberry trees, the word bestir means decide and decree. This is the season where you hear the marching. Bestir yourself. Bestir yourself. Hear me when I say this. The blessing of God. And I know right now we are really, we are really excited. We, I mean, we're like, oh God, this is awesome. And when God talks to you over this weekend, it's going to excite you. It's going to invigorate you. But understand this, the blessing of God, that's not the blessing of God. <laughs> Number one, the mandate over your life is not the blessing of God. It's the mandate over your life. God saying that you're going to preach to the nations. It's not a blessing. It's a command. It's a command. It's not a blessing. He's commanding you to preach to the nations. He's commanding you. He's commanding you. Greetings, woman of God. When he's saying to you, write the book, that's not the blessing. It is a command. It is a mandate. Elena, when he's saying for you to get on the movie screen and the stages, it is a command. It is not a blessing. He's not doing this because you're cute. He's not doing this because he likes you. He's not doing this because, oh, he's going to release this to you because he's just got things he needs. No, it is a command. It is not this frou-frou, candied apple blessing. It is a command. You were built to do it. You were built to create it. You were built to march forward. You were built for it. It is a command. And so when you come in contact with the provision, when you come in contact with the people, it is a command. Everything you get is coming to surround what you must do with your life. This is a command. Yes. And, and, and for you, you do uh, Prophetess 42, 185, <laughs> you do um, real estate. God is commanding some of you guys to buy up large plots of land. God is commanding you to be investors and to invest in land. It is not a blessing. It is a command. And we will have to stand and give account for what we did with what he told us to do with this life. It's a command. The urgency, I'm praying the urgency of God upon you. This ain't about us. Dr. Kim, God doesn't want to blow you into places because he ain't got nothing else better to do and because you're pretty to look at and because you got all them degrees. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. It's a command that's on your life. 
It's a command where God is taking you because he wants to bring his glory to provident providences. He wants to bring your glory to his glory to regions. He wants to bring his glory through you to places that you didn't even know that he spoke you in. It's not about us. There is a command over us called our life. Urgency. The world has need of him in you. The world has need of him in you. So you got to get there. And the platforms are going to be opened up. Yeah, I know. And I'm talking to a niece too. I'm talking to a niece too. Y'all hear me? I'm, 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 Dr. Kim, Atlanta has to, they have to hold me accountable. It's, this ain't cute. This ain't cute. Yes, you will get to the benefits. The benefits that come from some of the things that you will do. Those are benefits. The blessing of God on your life is not the call of God on your life. That's a command. Esther didn't become queen because she was cute and pretty. He used her cute and pretty to get her there. And then once he got her there, boom, this is why you're here, baby. Yeah. I'm praying for the church. We, I need you to know what God is saying for you to do, and then I need you to do it. I need you to take your place so we can do kingdom, so that we can build kingdom, so that we can lock arms and we can go forth. There's nothing small, and I've been saying that, and we're getting ready to get off. There's nothing small. There's nothing small about you, right? The, the whole, and I've been, I've been saying, I'm getting on my soapbox, getting on my soapbox. You know, the Bible does say, you know, despise not small beginnings. And so a lot of people were in this place and were saying, oh, this is small. It's not, who told you it was small? If God ordered your feet here, there's nothing small about this. If God ordered you here, there's nothing small about you. Because God is on the inside of you. Just do it. I don't care if you're flipping burgers at McDonald's right now. Baby, that's nothing small about that. God wants his glory there in that McDonald's. God wants to meet with people there. And there's nothing small about that. Lift your head and do what God is calling you to do. And so, Father, I thank you for the prosperity of your people. Nothing missing, nothing lacking, and nothing broken. And I decree your word that you speak over them. And Isaiah, you said, your word shall not return back unto your void. And so all of these people, they have a name and their name is a word. And I say to you, God, that these, your people will not return back to your void, but they shall prosper and accomplish. They shall have great success. And that's what you are sending them to. Send them, God. Blow in them, God. Meet with them in the Ruach, in the spirit of God, and give them divine intel. This is a unique season and your people shall not miss you. We shall not squander this season of acceleration. We shall not squander this season of great blessing. We shall not squander this season of understanding the magnanimity. Hallelujah. The magnanimous call upon our life. Even if man says it's minuscule and small. If God says this is what I would have you to do. It's huge. It's magnificent. It's wonderful. It's glorious. And I accept. So, Father, hear the voice of your intercessor as I pray for your people. Because, I'm God, I'm really praying for you. I'm praying, God, that in the heavens what you would want happen, that in the earth that you would not get a crop of bitter grapes, but that, God, the harvest would be sweet to you. I'm praying for your people that you, God, will be so pleased with what they do with you. I'm praying, Master, for heaven's crop. Hear my voice as I stand in the gap. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. Amen. All right, guys. I love you. I love you. If you guys have any questions or you're like, hey, Denise, this is what God is saying and I'm feeling some kind of way, hit me up in the inbox and in Facebook. I will pray for you. I return messages. For real, for real. Love you too, Rosette. Which we're praying for London. Something's amiss in London. Y'all pray for London. Something's amiss. Something's amiss. And we need that to be corrected. Yes. Um, hit me up if you're like, hey, Anise, you know, I hear you, but um, this is where I'm at. Yo, pray for me. Will, by Monday morning, amen, thank you, man of God, by Monday morning, I need you to spring out of bed with purpose. Spring out of bed. Spring out of bed. Yes. Yes, I'm on Facebook. Anise Silliman. Yes. Anise Silliman. Okay. What's your friend's name, Narissa? Let's pray for them. Yes, Cedrica. Thank you. Just, are, do you, are you going to say what you want, Cedrica, or you just want me to pray for you? If you guys got to get off, I'm going to pray for two people. Um, love you, love you, love you. Thank you. Holly? Okay, okay, okay. All right, and we're going to pray for her. Yes, yes, you can email me. You can, or Facebook message me. Thank you, I love you too at Aolanda. Jackie? Okay, Sandrika, did you answer? I didn't see you. Okay, do you, do you want to you wanna be specific or you just want to pray for you? <laughs> Amen. It's my pleasure. I'm serving God. It's my worship. I'm waiting on Sandrika. Mm -hmm. She is, sort of. Yes, I can, but I need your name, sir. What's your name? I like to say people's names. This handles, boy. Mr. 911 Red. <laughs> okay, healing. Okay. Yeah, I remember your name, sir. Coretta James. Well, it looks like we're getting ready to pray for people. <laughs> um, need quick recovery for the DPN procedure. Procedure. Okay, that's your job, isn't it? Okay. All right. Wendy, Wendy, do you want to be specific, or you just want prayer? I'm in dire need of healing and relief from something that has me and my family. Miss D. Savoy. Okay, so it sounds like there's a lot of um, healing on here. D. Savoy. Don, thank you. Thank you. I just saw somebody said they had a, was it a growth on their neck? Right. It's okay. Was it, did you say a growth on your neck? Y'all know on my handwriting, a cherished ray is not on here. Yeah, I knew it was DPN. I see, because I know what you do. Um, okay, I, we just pray. For, we just pray for purpose, but I'll pray for it again. Um, okay, what was that puzzle will be okay, Pam? We already decree that it is. We decree that your proposal, Pam, your proposal is comb through it. I need you to lay hands on it. Healing, healing and guidance. Okay, I'm just gonna pray. Healing and guidance. Okay, we. I need you to lay hands on. I need you to pray the wisdom of God. Mm -hmm. The wisdom of God on it. Here's the thing. I'm a writer. I'm a writer. But uh, a lot of times God will strike a lot of the fluffing stuff from the writing. And so don't be so attached to your writing. Because sometimes we, we, we have such an investment, right? And the end piece that when God is wanting to edit some things out. And this is just life in general, but with writing. When God wants to um, edit some things out, face to clear up quick, quickly. Okay. Did I miss something? But I'll, I'll, I'm just going to write it down. I'm going to ask questions. <laughs> um, that when God begins to edit, just trust him. Trust him. Trust him and edit and do it quickly. Do it quickly. Okay? So I just need you to lay hands on it. And I need you to pray and decree God's wisdom over your writing. God's wisdom over your words. God's wisdom even over the tone of how it's written in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Okay. Um, it's okay. It's okay. So, Sandrika, I'm praying for you. Um, 
It's a, we don't know the ins and outs and the technical terminology. You said a quick turnaround, and this has something to do with your work, right? So something to do with your, with your work. She's in the technology field, guys. She's in the technology field. And so, Father, we are, no, oh, what does that have to do with VPN, right? Did you say VPN? Isn't a VPN like a, a network? I know that. Marketplace ministry or church ministry? Okay. Hope today, what is your name? Cedric, I need you to help me. Please, God's purpose and strength to serve him despite your struggles. You you have the strength, baby. You have the strength. You're gonna keep going, Nadine. Nadine. You this is you while you were on this scope, God was strengthening you. Hear me when I say that. I just need you to receive it. I just need you to receive it. All of us on here, all of us on here. We have our good days and we have our bad days, baby. And just because you have a bad day, French for hope. Oh, I like that. Um just because you have a bad day, just because you have a bad moment, just because you have a bad week, just because you have a bad season, doesn't mean, doesn't mean, um, what is your name? Does it mean, write your name in, does it mean that you are, you know, tripping, that you're losing faith, that you, no, it just means you, you in a struggle right now, you in a war right now, you in a fight right now, and you got scrapes, it hurts. Um, I know it does. Stephanie? Stephanie, um, it, but it doesn't mean, it just means that you've got to strengthen yourself and you've got to make that decision. But I'm praying with you, I'm praying for you, but, and I'm saying to you as I'm praying, I'm not praying out of sympathy, I'm praying with empathy. Because we there, all of us, every person that you come in contact that is saved, we struggle, baby. Yes, we struggle. Oh, okay, you got a dermatology appointment. Black brown spots removed from my face, quick recovery. Okay, we're Sandrika, yes. Okay, that's why I was like a little, okay, okay. So hear me when I say this, woman of God, woman of God, um, Stephanie. We are, we, we are, we're not only just praying with you, but we're standing with you. This is not a season to be discouraged. This is a season to be encouraged. This is a season. This is a season for you to be encouraged. And so father in the name of Jesus. And if you are where she is right now, if you need some encouragement, just lift your hands and receive it. God is pouring out encouragement. This has been a rough year. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to put icing on it and say, Oh, bless the Lord. No, this has been a rough year. There has been some cuts and some pain. There has been some death. There has been some craziness that's, that has happened. It has been a rough year. But in the name of Jesus, I don't need you to stay in that place of rough. I need you to put your eyes on God and understand that the goodness of God is still the goodness of God. And there is nothing bad in God, evil in God, dark in God. He is still good. I need you to focus in that and he is going to strengthen your feeble knees. He's going to straighten your back every weak place in you, in the spirit and in the natural. It is being erased. It is being eradicated. It is being spanked because the the where, where we are weak, he is strong. And so we move out of the way so that God could take his seat on the throne and through and we are strengthened in him. And so right now, Stephanie, where you are, receive the being strengthened in him. In him, you live. In him, you move. In him, you have your very being, your very existence, your very strengthening. So Father, encourage her. Father, encourage her. Holy Ghost, encourage her. Holy Spirit, wipe her tears. Holy Spirit, mend her heart. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, mend her heart. Holy Spirit, mend her heart. Holy Spirit, mend her heart. That she will not go into the next season with the feelings of I'm so broken, I'm so broken, I'm so broken. You're not broken. You're not broken. You're not broken. You're better. You're better. You're better. You're better. You're better because you went through it. You're better because you seen it. You're better because you had to walk through it, but you're not broken. God is putting you back together again. This is the season where God is putting you back together again. This is a season where God is remembering you joint to joint, muscle to muscle in Jesus name. And I know I just got excited because this is, this ain't a thing about sympathy. This is a thing about empathy. I've been there. I know that. Hallelujah. Cedrica. Yes. We're praying for a quick recovery and clear skin. Let me, can I give you a story? I used to feel crazy, like when Periscope like kind of came out, I was really going through this thing with my skin. I know you guys, I told you guys this story. Um, well, some of you guys have heard the story. When I was going through the divorce, my skin broke out like, and I never had breakouts. Over every area, now this is different, same thing, it's still the same principle. Over every place of my face, there was no clear skin. And so that's insult to injury, because I was already depressed. 
Like I was going through a season of depression and then my face freaking broke out and there was no clear skin anywhere on my face. And so I would get on people's scopes. And this is, this is what I'm driving at. And they would be like, write in your, your test, your prayer request. I'll be like, please pray that my, this acne would clear up. <laughs> And I felt silly putting it in there. And then the people would say, oh, we pray confidence upon you. That's just a little thing. It's no big deal. It is a big deal. It's a big deal. Yes, it is. It's a big deal because it made me not want to go out the door even more. It was a big deal because I wasn't doing ministry because I did not want to be seen. It was a big deal because it hurt. It was a big deal because I love the way I look. It's a big deal. And if it's a big deal to me, it's a big deal to God. It was a big deal. Yes. And so Sandrika, we are praying a speedy, if you have skin issues, put them in. I pray, I prayed about cellulite. Yes, I have. We prayed about cellulite on this scope. <laughs> And I'll do it again, dirt it. Yes, it is. Yeah, God is into that. Come on, when we look at Esther, we look at Rebecca, we look at David, we look at Solomon. He, we, they talk about how they looked, right? Okay. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for Sandrika's recovery time. We thank you that there will be no scarring. We thank you that her skin will be in even better condition than when she went in, in Jesus' name. We bless you for Sandrika. We bless you, God, for what you're doing in her. And what, whatever the cause was of these spots, whatever was going on in her, her system, whatever was going on that caused these uh, uh, spots to appear, and for one, we're praying that they never appear again. They never appear again. And so, God, even if it's a food allergy, if it's something that uh, she's uh, uh, and chemical imbalances, Father, we thank you that you give her the wisdom, the wisdom to know what it is. So internally, internally, she'll never be in this place again that it shows up in an external fruit. And so we're praying for her beauty. We're praying for her skin. We're praying, God, that when she looks at herself, she feels pretty. We're praying that this will clear up quickly because you have much work for her to do. And for women, this is huge. For women, how we look and how we feel, how our hair, what's going on with our hair, what's going on with our skin, what's going on with our body, it, it, it really deals with how we show up. It's huge. That's why we get attacked there. And so God, we're praying for her. We're praying for Sandrika and we're praying for all women who are going through, maybe they're, they've lost some hair in this season. Maybe they feel uh, old, like they they look and they see like wrinkles or something. God, we're praying. <laughs> we are praying for beauty. Hmm. Coretta, have you gone to the doctor, Coretta? We're, we're praying for you. Have you gone to the doctor? We're praying for you. We're praying whatever it is. We know that um, moles, that's what you got. Okay, I think, don't they? Uh, okay, go on to the doctor. We're praying that the doctor will have insight. We're praying that they give you insight. We're praying that they give you the source. Some of that stuff is just hereditary. And so we even pray about the hereditary stuff that we're not going to say, well, this is hereditary, so it's okay. But we're saying that it stops with us in Jesus' name. We're saying we, we believe that uh, when you go to the doctor, Oh, okay, we're praying for that. We that we'll go to the doctor, uh huh. And when you go to the doctor, that they will have process, or they'll tell you uh, natural things after that they've removed them, that they will not keep growing, and that that you will not scar from it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, the person who said their adult teeth growing back, we pray for that in Jesus' name. We pray that your adult teeth will grow in, or that God will give you wisdom on you know what to do, what to do, what to do. Um, Amen. But you know, your teeth, you know, that's, that's huge. That's huge. So we're praying for you in Jesus name. We're praying. That's not a small thing. Unexplained weight gain, unexplained weight gain. Thank you. Woman of God. Um, your thyroid, have you gone to the doctor? Have you gone to the doctor? And this is for, and then I'm gonna get back to the list. Cause I do have a list guys. Okay. So unexplained weight gain. If this is you receive it, receive it. Father, in the name of Jesus, male or female, we don't believe that when you get older, you're supposed to put on a whole bunch of weight. We don't believe that. Number one, I am praying for people who have a sugar addiction. Sugar can throw off your thyroid. Sugar can throw off your hormones. And that can cause weight gain. And what it can do is it can disrupt. It disrupts your systems. And once they get disrupted, it's hard to get them back right again. And so I'm praying that God would give you wisdom about what it is, that God would give you wisdom if it's your, okay, if it's your thyroid, if your hormones are imbalanced, if it's your diet, that even if God resets your diet for seven days or so, 
or maybe you get off meat for six months or maybe you give up sugar if you have a sugar addiction i'm praying for you god release me from my sugar addiction i had a real bad sugar addiction i don't eat sugar anymore god can do it he did it over the space of two weeks i haven't been on sugar for over a year i don't want it i don't crave it i don't need it i'm telling you so reach up and grab it if it's for you so i'm praying for unexplained weight gain weight can make you feel some kind of way your clothes ain't working right you're not you feel me so we're praying for that God, we need, we need help with the choices that we make for food. We need help when it comes to exercise. God, for those of us who don't like to exercise, we're praying that you would make our, turn our appetite towards liking to work out, wanting to run, wanting to go to the gym, wanting to do these things in Jesus name. God, help us make better decisions. Help us form new habits. Father, help us. We're saying to you, we are willing. We are willing. If you want us to go to a plant-based diet for so many months, we will do it. Just help us in the place of our appetite. We know that there will be a level of struggle, but please, Lord, we want to honor our body. We want to, mm -hmm, we want to honor the simple that you've given to us. We want to live long and a good quality of life in Jesus' name. And so we're praying, God, over the decisions that we're making. We're, we're, we're putting them on the altar of God before you and we're saying to you, Father, give us wisdom. Give us wisdom. Give us wisdom. Give us wisdom in Jesus' name. We're praying for Holly, um, Narissa. Praying for Holly. Uh, I gave her some, you know, I talked to her yesterday. She's got to use wisdom and use it. Guys, I'm going to say this. You can refer people to me and I will pray for them and I will love on them. But here's the one thing that I will not do. I will not make God out to be a lie. I won't. God loves you. God loves us, but God is, he is tied to his word. And so we've got to make sure that we're doing our part to get sin out of the camp. And if we're willingly living in or doing something that is sin, God can, God will only do so much. Because it wouldn't be fair. His word is his word is his word is his word. And he's, he's telling us not to engage in something to protect us. And so, but I'm praying for her that she would, would understand that the love of God is for her. And even though it's a tight place and even though it's a tight situation, um, y'all, y'all pray for her. her name is Holly. Uh, y'all pray for her. Um, that she would understand that not to blame God, but that God loves her. And that she would take personal responsibility and then she would begin to ask God to help her get out of um, her situation, help, help her to turn this thing around, help her to see her way out in him. And that what he tells her to do, that she would do it. That what he's telling her to do, the instruction that he gives her, that she would do it. And guys, that's one of the hardest things. When God tells us we got to do something, we got to give up something, we got to walk away from something, and it is a part of our life. But that's the thing that's blocking the movement of God. That's the thing that's blocking the turnaround from God. And I can't pray that off of you. I cannot prophesy that off of you if you willingly won't let it go. Does that make sense? Yeah. So we're praying for her that God would open her eyes, that God would open her eyes and just love on her and that she would receive the love of God and that she would just go through her process with God over her whole life. We're praying for her, Narissa. Tell her we're praying for her. God's going to open up doors for her, but there's going to be some things that she's going to do on her part so that the blessing of God can come in full force, so the glory of God can come in full force in Jesus name. In Jesus name. And I pray for you, Pam, right? Um, Clarence, we're praying for healing. We're praying for healing. We're praying for healing. You didn't, did you say what healing was for? I'm just going to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift up Clarence to you. My son's salvation is, okay. Okay, we're going to pray for, we'll pray for salvation for loved ones too. Okay. Clarence, we're praying for you. We, we lift up your name before God. We lift up, yeah, we lift up your name before God. We're praying the blessing of the Lord in your bones. We're praying the blessing of God in your body and the systems of your body in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father, that the hand of the Lord is on him. We thank you, God, that you've called him to a long life, called him to a long and prosperous life, called him to a long, energetic life. We, we speak the peace of God. We shalom. We shalom the systems in your body. We shalom the systems in your body. We speak to the wind and the waves that is going on, and we decree we declare through the sound of Jesus, peace be still. We shalom the systems of your body. You were in a car accident, if I can remember correctly. You were in a car accident. And so even the effects 
that were let we prayed this before and we're gonna we're gonna keep praying it we're gonna keep praising it praising for it god has already uh given you your healing god has already healed those places in your brain you fell you fell okay but didn't you have a car accident before and it left some there were some effects that were left over yes i just did that whatever <laughs> Um, so we're praying, God, that even the places, no, I had no, oh, you did, okay, I'm sorry, I have you mixed up with someone else, I'm sorry, you had, you had failed, okay, we're just gonna pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father, for the, um, if there was, the things in that were, I know, broken, I don't know who I am, my bad, I didn't put you in a car accident, Jesus, I'll be trying to remember, guys, I'm not really good at that, charge it to my head and not my heart, Hallelujah. But anyway, Father, the places that hurt, the, I love you too, Clarence, the places that are in pain, the places that, you know, um, sometimes when you fall or you have, there are things that where it's okay for a while and then it's not okay and it hurts real bad and it prohibits you from like really living life to the fullest, you know what I'm saying? Really living life to the fullest. We, we, we come in uh, and we're standing in proxy for Clarence right now in the name of Jesus and God in his body, the things in his body that are, that hurt and that cause him pain and where he cannot engage fully as a young man to uh, engage life and to, you know, be fast and to be swift and to be able to do all of these things that he wants to do because there's pain, because there's this, because there's that. God, we believe in your healing power. God, we believe healing is real. God, we believe you're still in the healing business. God, we believe that where your presence is, healing cannot help but come and rest. And so we're praying, God, that your presence would envelop him even right now in the name of Jesus, where there is pain, Clarence, put your hand on where there is pain. Put your hand on where there is like, you know, the, the places in your body that's just not like working right, that's not on and off, even if there's no pain in it right now, but there's a cycle of pain that's attached to it. Touch those places in your body. We have to move around a little bit. Just touch them. Father, in the name of Jesus, we believe that healing virtue is being released right now on Clarence, in Clarence, for Clarence, in Jesus' name. God, I believe that as 2017 will make its turn to 2018, that his testimony will be, I once had pain, I once... Uh, went through this. I once had flare-ups, even if it's almost like it's arthritis. I once went through these things, but God eradicated my pain. God healed me. Every broken place, every splinter place inside of my body, God put it back together again. I know, I know that God is real because God did this thing for me, Clarence, and that people would have healing, come into healing because of your testimony. We are standing in the gap. We believe in the power of healing. We believe that because you typed it in, God is healing you in Jesus' name. And so we receive it on your behalf. We receive it for you. We bless God for you. We bless God for the healing that's in your body. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. No weapon formed against your mobility. No weapon formed against your youth. No weapon formed against your flexibility shall prosper. Hallelujah. We stand in the gap for it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Oh, Lord. My handwriting is horrible. Um... Sandrika, we pray for Devon. Um, we pray for Pam. We pray for Stephanie. Nadine, do we pray for you? Okay, I'm going to pray for you. I'm sorry. Pray that I find. Okay. You have said that, James, like 30 times, and I am not overlooking you. <laughs> we are praying that in the right season, God's going to hook you up with your spouse. We're praying. I know we're praying that in the right season, if this is for you and you are looking for a spouse and so you want your spouse, not looking for, you know, um, we're praying the right season. I'm praying that you will be married once and only once. And so I'm praying that whoever God has tailor made you for and tailor made for you, that God is getting you guys prepared for each other, that when y'all get together, it is a kingdom business. That when God gets y'all together, that y'all ain't going to have to deal with each other's baggage to a certain point, that it will be beautiful and all the years of being single will be worth it because the marriage will be so good and the marriage, okay, that's fine. Um, that's cool. I don't care if it was your third or fourth or fifth. I don't care. That you will be married from this point only once. That you will get married again one more time. Once. Once. Okay. Here's the thing. I don't care if you are divorced. I'm praying that you will get, when you get married, it will be forever. Once. Yes. Once. Because out here in these streets, 
right? People multiple, five, six, seven times. <laughs> I'm saying out here in these streets. No, no, no. I'm praying that we will wait. We will wait until it's proper and it's lawful, till we are ready, till the person is ready, that our finances are ready, our mind is ready. Come on. Yes. Um, that we understand the, 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 the weight that comes with marriage, that we understand how we're going to show up as a husband or how we're going to show up as a wife. What type of person do we show up as? Who are we right now? What has God called us to do? That we understand what type of spouse we need and what type of spouse we are. And so I'm praying the timing of God. I'm praying the timing of God. I'm praying that God, that when God gives you her and she, he, he gives you to her, to each other, I'm getting tongue tied, praise God, that it will be right. It will be right. That there will not be a lot of uproar around it. Y'all know sometimes um, you meet the right person, but there's like a lot of uproar. Mm -hmm. That there's a lot of uproar. Um, and I'm praying that that won't be, that there won't be a lot of drama, even if there are kids involved. I'm just going to go there. Even if there are kids involved, in the next, when you get married again, and this is for anybody, that there will not be a lot of drama even associated with those kids. There won't be a drama associated with maybe their last spouse or their baby mama, baby daddy, whatever. That there will not be a lot of drama, that it will be a place of love. And if you have to be a stepdad or you have to be a stepmother, that it will be a beautiful thing, that it will lend value, that it will be beautiful, that this will be God ordained. Yes, there's going to be hard times. Yes, there's going to be not so good times. But in the coming together, you will know that it is so, that even the children will be ready to to receive you and that what's on the inside of you that God will get you if you have to be a step parent being a step parent is um is ministry it's ministry and it's a it's a role of ministry that's overlooked a lot because a lot of times as a step parent, you feel like you come second. You feel like you don't have a voice. You feel like, you know, the kids have got to get acclimated to you. The other person's got to get acclimated to you. But it's, it's really ministry because you are now putting your handprint on these children that you did not birth. I know um, Pagani put a post out there honoring stepdads. It's ministry. You are dealing with somebody else's children with somebody else's offspring and you're helping to rear and to raise them and so for every person who is a step parent or who will be a step parent i'm praying that god will put you together i'm praying you know stepchildren can hurt you you know it's almost like they get a pass if they cuss you out ask me how i know yes that's my mom it's almost like they get a pass to treat you some kind of way and you just got to take it because they're going through something and so may god give us thick skin if god is calling us to be step parents that we will go in and we will do the god thing and we will handle them with care that we will not take it personally that we will be ready to do it y'all marriage is ministry marriage is ministry especially if there are kids that are going to be involved and they have a certain age and they're like we not we don't want you we're not ready for you right? That you will still go in, that you will still be loving. And so we're praying, we're praying for your proper seasons. We're praying for your proper timing. But even right now, man of God, enjoy your time. Enjoy being single. Sometimes we long, dare I say lust, for the next thing that we miss the God thing that God is doing right now. When you're married, as you already know, life as you know it is over. You will have to share everything. You will be, and that while it's good and it's glorious and it's all of this, there is purpose in this in this time right now. Honor what God is doing in this time right now. And so, yes, I'm praying that God send you what God is sending you and God's going to do that anyway. But I'm also praying that you will just enjoy where you are right now, being single. That you would enjoy, that you would live, that you would smell the roses, that you will be interesting. For every person that's single, I'm praying that you will be interesting. May your spouse not meet you when you're boring. You don't have no hobbies. You don't read no books. You don't do nothing but go to work and come home and watch TV. May you be interesting. May you get out there and live life without your spouse, without being married. May you get up, get out, and get something in the terms of outcast. May you, because what will happen is your spouse will come and you will put the burden on them to make you happy, entertain me, make me feel loved. We've got to spend every waking moment together. No, go be interesting. Join some gyms, read some books, get a new hobby, start your business, travel the world, travel to some states, do things on the weekend. Be interesting so that you love your life. There's purpose in being single right now. May we, and I'm single too, may we not lust for the relationship. 
Yeah. May we not lust. And all we're doing is looking one day, one day, one day. And every day that that day doesn't come, we feel in some kind of way. Oh, I'm so lonely. I'm eating by myself again. Oh, no. Your girl get her little, my son is gone with his father. I get my little paper plate. Yeah, I said paper plate. I get my little paper plate, my little paper fork, and my little plastic cup. And I sit down by myself and I enjoy the peace and quiet. Because I understand when I'm married, I will be cooking and cleaning and serving. And right now, all I have to do is make one plate, one plate, get one cup, sit down. And so I'm enjoying the freedom. I'm, I'm just be honest. I'm enjoying the freedom because I understand that when I move into that marital situation, that freedom, it turns into another type of freedom. The freedom to serve. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? You get to eat now. Right now, man of God, you get to sit down and, you know, I pray that you eat. Yeah, I pray that you eat healthy. But you ain't got nobody looking over your shoulder saying, don't eat that. You shouldn't eat that. I don't know why you eat that fast. Why you chew like that? You know how we women are. I don't know. Why, why you drink your water like that? You be drinking too. But you get to sit down in peace and quiet. You get to watch TV. You ain't got to listen to how her day was and how she went. And I, when the day happens, you will be there. You'll be in it to win it. You will appreciate it. But right now, you get to do you. You get to you get to be free. You get to, you know what I'm saying? You get to enjoy God. You get to be wrapped in the presence of God and in the Holy Spirit of God. And that is so to be cherished. That is so to be cherished. So for every single person, get your life, love your life. Enjoy your singlehood because when you're married, you're married. And I I mean, I'm I'm not, you know, I'm not saying this anybody on the scope, but I'm saying there's some married people, you know, that they be lusting and they be wishing they were single. So anyway, enjoy where you are in every, in every, whatever state you find yourself in, therein. Be content because this is where God has ordained you for now. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Okay, so we pray for Clarence. Um, we're praying for healing. Amen. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So I'm funny. If you haven't been on the scope before, I'm kind of ratchet at times, you know, whatever. So we're praying for a general healing. Cause I think that came up kind of a lot. I said that did I, leave, did I, I didn't leave anybody out. Did I it's healing and salvation? I see that I can make that out. My handwriting is really bad. Healing and salvation. If you have a family member or a child, Jackie, okay. Um, if you have a family member or a child um, who need, or friend, whoever, who needs salvation that you've really been laboring for them, we're praying that this is the, the season of the open door finances. Okay. Okay. I'm going to pray for finances. Okay. Um, we're praying that God would... Um, we're praying that God would open the door. One plants, another waters, but God gives the increase. And so while you've been planting in prayer, we believe that God is going to send people by to begin to evangelize and to begin to speak and to show forth God's love and God's heart and God's wisdom. We believe that this is the season of the open door for salvation. We're praying that God, the people who are on the list, who need to be saved, the people that we're praying for, that they would come into the knowledge of you. We're praying, God, that you would give them a space of time to make uh, an educated decision. We're praying that you would make their hearts not be hard, but to make it pliable, God, and that you could reveal yourself to them in this season in Jesus. We're praying for this season. God, we're not praying for another season. We're not praying down the road. We're praying in the days to come that the people who are on our list, that they will be saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Spirit. We stand in the gap for them, and we're saying we take up spiritual power of attorney. We believe that their name is written already in the Lamb's book of life. We believe, God, that you've already called them, you've already wooed them, you've already touched them, you've already delivered them. We believe that it's only a matter of time, and we believe we're standing in the space of time that you are saying now, now, now. 
And so every other voice that is around them that is anti-salvation, that is anti-God, that is anti-Christ, we soften it now in Jesus' name. Where there is warfare, D, where there is warfare around your son, where there is warfare around these people because they are standing in the season where they are to hear from God. They're standing in the season where they're going to be open. We silence the warfare. We send in warring angels to surround these people. We send in warring angels to every person who is on our list that God, your voice, will be able to cut through the shenanigans cut through the evil, cut through the darkness, God, even if you meet with them in their dreams, even if you meet with them, God, when they're drunk or when they're um, high on, so come on, we're not, we're not playing, praying cute, when they're high or when they're drunk, that they will be shaken because they hear the voice of God, they will be shaken because you blow bride them, then so be it, God, whatever you've got to do to bring them to you, whatever you've got to do to make them say yes, Lord, we're praying for preservation of life, we're praying that the hand of God would surround them in protection, we're praying that our covenant would cover them, God, and that you will preserve their life in this season, that the enemy would not take their life out of time, that they will come into the know the salvation of God in this season in Jesus' name, and for our sons and our daughters. God, that you will cause their friends that mean them no good, friends that were sent by the devil, friends that were sent by the evil one, that God, you will cause them to turn their backs on our children, that they would no longer want our children, that they would be two-faced to our children, that our children will walk away and say, you know what, I'm not feeling them right now, I don't like the way they treat me, and that God, you will get our children alone, and then you will begin to minister to our children, we're praying for our kids, we're praying for the ones that came from our loins, that they would know God, that they are of our house and as for me and my house we will serve God and we will serve God forever for me and my house and my children's 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 children they will name the name of God they will worship the one and true God no other religion will come into our line no other religion will be named in this line no other religion will be named in our generations our line belongs to the father and so mama and daddy, you got to open your mouth and you got to decree over your line. I don't care what your children are doing. I don't care what it looks like. You have the spiritual power of attorney to speak and declare what shall be in your house, your generations, in your line, and in your name, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, keep speaking over them. Keep talking to them. They're not lost. If you spoke it and out of your mouth they came, they were lost. Out of their mouth came, out of your mouth, you curse them. Take it back. Take it back. Take it back. I don't care what they're doing. Even in your anger, I don't care what they're doing. Don't curse them. Get mad at them. Let them know you're angry. <laughs> Let them know you're angry. But don't curse them. Don't curse the hand of God in their life. Don't curse the covenant of God. Don't curse the blessing. Don't do it. Life over your children. Life into your children. Life into their future. Their future shall not be lost. Why? Because your word carries so much weight. Even if they don't want to talk to you. Even if they act like, Mom, you're in my business. You get on my nerves, Mom. Oh, Dad, I just... Yeah. And they don't tell you what's going on. It doesn't matter. In the spirit, your sound carries so much weight. So when they're out there in the street doing dumb stuff, they hear your voice saying, you ain't never going to be nothing. Why? Because that voice, that sound carries so much weight. Or they're out there in the street and they're and they doing something crazy and they hear that sound saying, you know what? I'm praying for you. I'm believing God for you. And they hear that sound. They hear that sound. Why? Because your sound, doesn't matter if they're grown, baby. Your sound still carries so much weight. Your voice will carry weight with them for the rest of their lives. Their lives, not your life, their life. Your sound, your voice was designed to do that. Jacob blessed his sons. His sons were grown. And it directed their path. It directed their days. The weight of your voice. So keep praying. Keep confessing. Even if you call and they don't pick up the phone. You know, kids are notorious about that. Don't pick up the phone. You leave something on their answer machine. They ain't got to call you back. It ain't about me calling. It ain't about you acknowledging my voice. Hear me when I'm giving you strategy. You ain't got to call me back. You ain't got to call me back. Don't call me back in fact. But you're going to hear my voice. You're going to hear my voice. Don't call me back. But I'm going to speak the blessing. I'm going to speak over you what I see. 
Hey, man of God. Hey, God's son. Hey, God's daughter. I just want to call and let you know I was thinking about you. Everywhere you go today, take Christ with you. Bye. And you just do it. You don't even have to say, call me back. I don't, I don't want to talk to you, actually, because you're going to make me mad if I talk to you. <laughs> you're going to piss me off if I talk to you because you're going to say something crazy. And then I'm going to go there. And I, so just let me talk to your answer machine for a season. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, it's okay. I'm praying for you. Don't take it personal. And I know that sounds crazy. You know, our kids are funny and they don't mean it. They don't know what they're doing. They don't have a, they don't have the wisdom, woman of God. They don't have the wisdom to understand what they're doing. They don't have the they don't under they don't have the wisdom. They're babies. They're I call young adults toddlers in an adult world. They have no idea what they're doing. This is the first time they've been here. They need guidance, but they they want to, you know, pull their feathers up. They want to show I'm grown. I don't need you. I don't need your voice. I don't blah, 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 blah. You've been there, done that, got the t-shirt. You know they going to need you. They going to need you before you need them. And they will find you in the space they left you in. Don't, don't get offended. They don't know what they're doing. They are being influenced by a culture and a world. And the, you know what I'm saying? Don't take, as best you can, don't take it personal. They will come back and they will apologize. And they will be very remorseful. They will. They absolutely will. You, you, here's the thing. Can I help you parents? Just for a second, can I help you parents? The enemy wants you to get offended. Because when we get offended, we, we you know, we kind of, we'll even back off from, how we engage with with God in prayer about our kids. We'll moan and we'll groan and we'll have an opinion about what they're doing and we're still not praying for them because there's something deeper that's going on. And so here's the thing. If your kid will do that to you, what are they doing out there in the world? What is really going on in their soul, right? And so when I take my kids into the, the presence of God, I cannot pray opinion over them. I even need to back off as being mommy or daddy, if you do, mommy or daddy. And I need to, I need to approach God as an intercessor. Like when I pray for kids all over the world and I really go there and I'm really praying with compassion and I'm really praying the hand of God. I'm, you know what I mean? When we you know, when we pray for people we don't know, we just go there. We're compassionate. We're like, oh God, we're travailing. But we pray for our kids. That will, you know, we be calling names in prayer. You know what I'm saying? God, I'm so hurt. God, I'm just, I'm so, I'm so, I'm so, I'm so. And so you've wasted so much time because you don't really understand what the enemy's for real, for real trying to do with your kids. And so you got to take that into the presence of God and you got to say, okay, God, I need to see. There's some things I'm not seeing with, with what's going on. And so remember, this is so good. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Sin separates us from the presence of God, right? Because we run and go hide. Not that God runs and hides from us, but we run and go hide. If your kid is running and hiding from your voice, something's going on. You represent the sound and the voice of God in their lives. So if your kid is putting separation, you know, if you, if you guys have a good relationship, you know, you're not cussing them out and going crazy. My mom does that, so I don't call her because I don't want to be cussed out. But if you are, you know, a parent and you're preaching God and you like, you know, I'm not going to tolerate the shenanigans, but God, 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 God. Yep. If, if your kids are, they're, they're not running from you. They're running from God. There's sep there's a separate, there's separation that's happening. They're separating themselves from the sound of God. And so that's why there's like venom. That's why the, the venom, you feel the venom, venom. That's that spirit. There is an echo. We, yesterday I did a, uh, a periscope and we talked about um, the damsel, the damsel who was operating with the spirit of divina divination, divination. She was not, not operating. She was, um, she was, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Possessed, possessed by divination. The word divination means python. The word possessed means echo. It's where we get our word echo, echo. Some of the things that's coming out of your children is not it's not their sound. It's an echo of another sound. It's 
It's an echo of another sound. Go into the presence of God. Where is the source of this sound? Because if I could get to the source of the sound, I can break the echo. What is the source of the sound? I need to break this echo. Did y'all catch that? When my, when my kid left for college, she had an echo of a niece. What she's, what she's saying is not her own stuff. She's too young. So that your kids have the sound of the home. That is the echo. That is the echo. So when your kids are coming back with crazy stuff, there's an echo of another sound. What's this sound? What is this? That's what I do. When my son comes up and I'm like, what is this? What's the sound? Because the sound, it doesn't sound like the sound that's reverberating out of my house. What is the sound I'm hearing? What is this echo? What is the source of it, God? Yes. When you go into the presence of God, got to be strategic parents. And as parents, sometimes we get, you know, I raised them. I sacrificed. I worked my fingers to the white meat of the bone. I did this and they've disrespected me and blah, 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 blah. And it's true. It's true. But there's something bigger that's going on. Something bigger is going on. And we need to get to the meat of the matter. Yeah. But it's true. I feel you. No, I mean, don't be like, it's true. It's like, you know, if you understood what I did to get you to college, I didn't have, I mean, I even went to college so that you could go to college and this is what you want to do. This is how you want to treat me. This is how you want it, please. And don't, you know, and so we get upset, but we don't got to, got to say, hey, 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 the enemy is coming to sift them. The enemy is coming to murder them. It's ain't about us. It's about your line. It's about your loins. See beyond that. Look beyond that. What's really going on? Atheism is not allowed in your line. What's really going on? What is the sound? What is the sound? <laughs> well, just, you know, don't talk about it now. Go into the presence of God and get strategy. God's going to give you divine intel. God is going to give you divine intel. Take it. Use it. Use it. You hear me? Use it. Use it. Y'all, we got to pray more intelligently over our kids. The enemy is coming for them. Yes, so we're praying for guidance on your business, your book writing, and your film, your writing, and your directing. You got a lot going on there, girl. Yes, <laughs> we're praying that God will give you the energy. The energy to keep going, to keep writing, to keep doing. And that God would send you a network, woman of God. Woman of God, that's what we're praying for. Yeah, it's okay. Don't take it personal. If he says he doesn't believe, that's God. You're just the middleman. God is God is not in heaven hurt and resentful. God's like, okay, I hear you. Okay, I hear you. You gonna need me in about 2.5 seconds. Don't be resentful. Don't be resentful. He's going through something and you need to see what he's going through. God's going to show you. God's going to show you. There's a sound. There's something going on. Amen? Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, you got a lot to do. And so I'm praying that God will even help you to strategize and compartmentalize what you need to, um, yeah, how you need to do it. You're welcome. You're welcome, woman of God. We love you. Thank you for joining the scope if it's your first time. We love you. We're a little community. Usually we're little numbers. But we, we are a community and we pray and we talk and we love each other and we're authentic. So thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. Um, so I'm praying for finances now. Amen. Praying for finances. Oh, thank you. I love you. Um, Father, in the name of Jesus, for everybody on this scope that has need of finances. And I'm raising my hand because I got some crazy news today. I'm raising my hand. I'm letting you never Hey, Stephanie, I love you. <laughs> Let me say this. I am not one to put on pretenses and act like it's all good in the hood because it's not. I go through just like you go through. We do it together and iron sharpens iron. Okay, we love you, Clarence. And so for every person, hands up, I know for every person who is on this scope that you are going, you've been since maybe... Um, January 1, 2017, for me, hands up, it has been a cycle of lean. 
super lean. And I knew it was going to be lean for a couple of months just because of how my, my business goes. <laughs> my business goes up and down. So I know there are lean months. And so you try to plan for those, which I did, but then it didn't stop. And then it was like, people owe you money. And then it just escalated and escalated and escalated and escalated. And now you like, whoa, you know what I mean? Like, whoa. And, and, and so I know the Lord has been releasing over this scope. This is not a season of loss. This is a season of gain only. I have, to, I have enough wisdom to understand that things in the kingdom are upside down, inside out. And so what looks like loss is really gain. And what will be gain would really be loss. And so even though it's been a season of lean on the, on the outside, I understand. I believe with everything in me that God has been holding and collecting and collecting and collecting and it's getting ready to burst forth burst forth if you've got something to write down with i need you to write that down the bursting forth in that same scripture that i told you guys about where david right bursting forth where david perceived when he was going through those battles back and forth with the philistines in the in the um, valley of giants he said when he said of god when he overcame the philistines the first time he said and god is like a bursting forth for me bursting forth of many waters bursting forth of many resources bursting forth of the spirit of god sometimes god will hold or collect right we didn't die the world didn't stop turning we didn't stop eating we didn't lose right but it was just leaner than what we wanted. And so we are looking for, our human eyes are looking for what we say, what we term as gain, what we term as excess. And when we don't see the excess, we feel like we're losing. When we don't see the excess, excess we feel like God is lying. And it's not so. God is waiting for a particular time because you're getting ready to cross over into. And as you're crossing over into, he's going to let it burst forth because you're, the things that you do is getting ready to radically change radically change there is great movement and there's great transition and so even right now number one I, before I had I pray ahead of for finances I'm going to pray for wisdom God let us see what we really see in. what is it that we're really looking at is this really because remember I said leanness what if God is saying it was never lean but you called it lean wisdom and so i gotta take what i'm saying doesn't look like a whole lot and to the presence of god dump it in his lap and say okay father what is this to you when god puts when god picks it up when i put it in his lap when god picks it up immediately it is anything other than lean when it stays in my hand it's lean when it stays in his hand it becomes large and so i'm praying for those of us who have really, for real, for real, been going through, certainly with finances, yes, certainly with finances since January 1 until today, that tonight you take the situation into the presence of God and you would just sit there. This is wisdom that you won't say nothing, that you will not tell God what it looks like. He knows what it looks like. He's there. You won't tell him about every bill you have under the sun for your whole life. He knows what it is. He's there. He's with you. Number one, you notice how I keep saying he's there? God hasn't left you. It's not when you pull out the bills, the spirit of God leaves. It doesn't work like that. God is there. Could it be that God has been waiting for us to bring everything in to his, into the presence of God and just dump it in his lap and sit there and wait for him? What do you call this season? What do you call this season? What do you name this season, Father? What have you entitled this season? I take my title off of this season. I repent for calling it lean, Anise. I repent for calling it lean. I repent for naming it for what it felt like in the natural. Because in the spirit, it's been anything but lean. In the spirit, it's been anything but lean. In the natural, it has felt lean. And so I go into the presence of God talking a natural thing instead of a spiritual thing. And so now I need to go into the presence of God and I need to get his terminology and his wording so that when I am in my life, I and him are speaking in harmony, agreement. I do and say what I see my father do and say, right? 
So I need to go into the presence of God tonight. We go into the presence of God and we dump this stuff in his lap. Everything I've called it, everything I've cussed it and cursed it, everything I've said, I'm saying right now, I'm putting on the altar of God and I'm saying, God, I need your wisdom. I need you to name this. Because how you walk out of this season is going to set you up for how you see next season. Sometimes we walk out of one season and we feel like God is giving us a reprieve, like you walk into a new season, but you feel like you're broken from the last season. So you handle this new season with broken hands. You handle this season from a broken mindset. I'm broken. I'm broken. Because of what happened to me last season, I'm just so broken. And God is saying that you, you're not broken from last season. You're not broken at all. There's nothing broken about you. Last season when I put you together again, and we have to understand that the process of healing is painful. You can be in a process of healing and it feels like you're breaking because the pain is so great. When you're, on, when you're in surgery, they put you out. You don't feel anything when you're in surgery. It's when you wake up from surgery and the healing begins. It feels like you're dying. When you're on the operating table, you don't feel like you're dying. Right? When you're on the operating table, you're not, you're not saying, oh God, they're cutting you open. Your organs are being exposed. You, you're, near, you're near death. Because you're open, right? You're not on the operating table saying, oh God, take my life, this hurts. Ah. No, you're, you're out. You don't feel nothing. It's when you wake up and they've sewn you back up and everything's all good. You have to start the process of healing and the process of healing is painful. It's painful. And so when you think you're in a season of God is breaking, God's breaking me, he's breaking me, I'm broken, I'm just breaking my bones and breaking, breaking, breaking. God's saying, no, you're not. This is a season of healing. But you keep, you keep saying breaking. I'm saying healing, you saying breaking. I'm saying healing, you saying breaking. I'm saying healing, you saying breaking. So there is no unity. There is no harmony. I'm saying healing, you saying breaking, healing, breaking, healing, breaking, healing, breaking. So this whole season, we've been at odds. You and God at odds. God is saying, I'm healing you. God, you're breaking me. I'm healing you. You're breaking me. Why are you breaking me? Accusing God of breaking you when God is really putting you back together again. And it's painful. Healing, the process of healing is painful. And when you get delivered to your next place, you're going to be whole, you're going to be good, you're going to be feeling good, you're going to be looking good. If you would just sign on and say, this is a season of healing. And so again, they're saying, oh God, guys, my last season was so crazy. It was so horrible. God just broke me now. I'm just now scraping myself up off of the pavement. You just, we just, you just missed it. You're not scraping yourself up from anywhere. That What you're saying is fake. You in a fake season now. Because it's fake. That ain't true. It's fake. You're healed, whole, and now delivered. And so, I'm praying that we will go into the presence of God tonight. And even with the whole January 1 till right now. Yes. Harmony. Harmony. One accord is harmony. It's a sound. The sound of heaven. The sound of heaven should be the sound that's flowing from you. Blessings, woman of God. The sound of heaven should be the sound that's harmony, agreement. The most important place that there must be agreement is what God is doing in your life. What God says about it, even if you feel like, God, you missed it. This is a season of healing. You say no season of healing, God? What you talking about? Even if it sounds like God is off, if he missed it, just trust him. Just trust him. Because even if he lied, it would be true. So just trust him, okay? But we got to go into the presence of God and see what he is calling it. What is he saying about it? What is he saying about your body? What is he saying about your finances? It ain't what it looks like. It ain't what it looks like. Never believe anything you hear and only half the things you see. The eyes be playing tricks on you. Go into the presence of God and close your eyes and hear from heaven. Let God paint you a picture and then just trust him. Just trust him. And so, yes, I'm praying with you. I'm praying over you, but I'm really praying wisdom because I need you to be saying the same thing that God is saying about you. It's so important. So important. 
And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm releasing your people tonight to take their cares into the presence of God, to dump them in your lap, to dump them in the lap of Jesus, and to see the caring nature of Jesus bubble up, the caring nature of Christ, the, the nature of Christ where he can bear our burdens. But then, God, that we would get the terminology of what you're speaking and saying over us. You're speaking and you're saying over our situations. You're speaking and you're saying over our finances, over our person, over our families, over our children, that we would say the same thing, that we would join you. We would join your sound. We would join your phrases. We would join your cho your chorus in this season. And where there is war between heaven and earth, because it is us speaking what we see with our eyes, our natural eyes, we repent. We relent. We walk away from that. And we say to you, Father, this go around. We want to know what are your notes on this season? What are our takeaways from this season? What happened to us in this season? We don't want to miss it. We don't want to miss the growth points. We don't want to miss the glow points. We want to get it all. And so we tonight, this over this weekend, Father, take your children on a journey so that we can get the interpretation of January 1 to June 16th. We need the interpretation. We need the interpretation because it's going to set us up for where we're going the rest of this year. Understanding. May the eyes of our understanding be open. For every person who's in need, who's in immediate need of bills being paid. Immediate need. Now, I'm not going to sit up here and be like Cocoa Puffs and ice cream. Some people got some carnos. They're about to start hiding their car. I'm just being honest. You got your car hidden in your friend's garage. Because you ain't paid a note in a couple months. Father, in the name of Jesus, we're praying for provision. We're praying for every light bill, every water bill, every gas bill, every medical bill, every student loan, every grocery bill, every bill that is past due. Every bill that is due. We are locking arms and we are believing for one another. For the grace and the, pr we're praying for manna. I'm praying for manna. I'm praying for manna. What is it? I'm praying for manna. <laughs> that you will come through, God, in ways and means that, that some people will get phone calls and they will say, you know what, this bill, we just went ahead and took care of it. With this bill, you don't owe. This bill, we're going to tack it on to the end of the next bill. We're praying for manna. That God, you will show up that this is not a season of loss, but that this is a season of gain. And so for the immediate needs of your people, some people, their refrigerator is really, really bare. And so God, I'm praying that you would blow people by who would sow seeds of food for families, sow seeds of gas money. Manna, uh -huh, that's what he fed the children of Israel with. And it means, what is it? Literally, manna means, what is it? What is it? And so may that be the handprint on our lives. God, what is it? It is the hand of God where we cannot, you know, trace God. What is it? We're okay. We know that we're not supposed to live from miracle to miracle to miracle to miracle. And that's not what we're trying to do. But we are praying for those who need miracles on this scope tonight. For people who are facing eviction, for people who are facing foreclosure, we are praying for provision. We are praying for favor. We are praying for it, God. This is not the season of loss. This is the season of gain. And so number one, they're not alone. They are not overlooked. They're not suffering in silence. They're not suffering by themselves. They're not going through and nobody knows what they're going through. The eye of God, the hand of God, the sound of God is right there with them. And this scope is a sign of that, that God sees. That God sees. And so over this weekend, we are believing for miracle manna. Miracle manna, even for school clothes. I'm, I'm just hearing this school clothes and, and people, somebody's wondering or they've been praying about um, how am I going to get school clothes? How am I going to get, you know, backpacks and school supplies? And, you know, they've already started that planning and it's already looking kind of bleak. 
already looking kind of bleak. In the name of Jesus, for every one of your children, we are praying for brand new school clothes, not hand-me-downs, brand new school clothes, brand new school shoes from underwear to socks to belts to t-shirts to their coats to their uh, backpacks to every folder piece of paper, every pencil, every pencil sharpener, every eraser of the glue sticks, the Kleenexes, the uh, paper towels that they got to bring, that everything will be new, tags on it, hanging in their closet because God is going to come through for you. Miracle manna. We are praying that tonight for your people, God, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we erase and eradicate worry and anxiety from your people. Yes, we're praying for direction for where God wants you. For every person that has to move, if you know that your season is up where you're living, we're praying that God would begin to open doors and he will begin to put you in front of the right people and he will release information about where he wants you to go. I need you to go into the presence. Y'all notice how I keep pushing you into the presence of God, right? I don't want you running from scope to scope waiting on a prophetic word. I want you to run into the presence of God. And when you come on scopes that we just commend what God is saying and that we join with you about what God has already said to you face to face. I need you to go into the presence of God. I need you to go into the presence of God and I need you to ask him. Where would he have you now? Where does he want his glory to rest? Do you understand that the neighborhood that you live in, his glory rests because you're there? So where does God desire to go now so that his glory can rest, so that his glory can be unleashed? Because you're there, because your, your, your prayers are there, do you understand that, that divorces in that neighborhood are minimized? Do you understand that gangs are stopped, that drugs are stopped because you move into a neighborhood because the glory of God is moving? I need you to go into the presence of God and say, okay, God, where do you want to go now? God, where do you want your glory to be released now? That's, and then he's going to begin to show you. Your eyes are going to be open. I need you to get in your car. I need you to open your ears. God's going to say, someone's going to be talking about a neighborhood. Someone's going to be talking about an apartment complex. And your ears are going to perk up. Go see. Go spy off the land. Go do. And when by your obedience, God's going to open doors. God's going to open doors, even for deposits. I'm hearing the Lord say this, even for deposits, that first month, that last month's rent, and you got to put all that together and you got to get the lights on. I'm hearing the Lord say that because of obedience, those things are just going to fall into place. Those things are just going to fall into place. Those things are just going to fall into place. Don't be scared of the process. Do not be scared of the process. Do not hesitate at the process. Understand that even where you live, there is mission and ministry on that too. There is purpose and potential on that too. Why? Because God wants his glory there. God wants his glory at that bus stop when your kids go to the bus stop with their kids. God wants his glory when you move schools and your kids got to go to a new school. He wants his glory there. Everything about you is purposeful. Everything about your household is purposeful. Go into the presence of God and ask him. Let him give you wisdom. Let him give you wisdom. Let him give you wisdom and insight. And when he gives you wisdom and insight, it's going to take away those butterflies. It's going to take away some of that anxiety. It's, yeah, don't be scared of the process. Get intel, get intel. And when you go and you see, you're going to see that even as you go through the process, you know what I mean? There's a difference between having fear and being scared. Courage is for being scared. That's what courage was designed for. It's not fear. Yes, yes. And so when, when, even when you go see and you get applications and you fill them out and you do the process, you're going you're gonna to be empowered and you're going to be encouraged. You're going to be empowered and you're going to be encouraged. Do it. Some of you guys got a stretching you to do some things. Some of you guys got a stretch, stretching you to go after a house. Do it. Do it. And you've been looking at your credit. You've been looking at your job. You've been looking at what's coming in. And you're saying, no, 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 no. Do it. What God is telling you to do, do it. Do it. Let God take you on a journey. Let God take you on a journey. Do it. Hallelujah. So God, I'm praying wisdom on your people. I'm praying wisdom in your presence. I'm praying, God, that as they worship, you will release your wisdom. That in their households, they would have wisdom. How we, uh, how we deal with our money, that we would do it with wisdom. How we spend money, we would spend with wisdom. Wisdom, wisdom, wisdom is the principal thing. Wisdom, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of you. And you will give liberally without reproach. And so we're standing believing that you are giving us wisdom liberally and without reproach. That what we do with our finances would honor you because we do everything as worship. 
And so over this weekend, over the time the people go in, in, in your presence with a pen and paper and silence, pen and paper and worship, that you, God, will begin to unveil your big plans for their lives. You love them. And so, God, I honor you for honoring them. I honor you for your big presence. I honor you, God. You're so awesome and you're so amazing. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, guys, I love you. We've been on for two hours and 30 minutes. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> right? So hit me up in the inbox. Um, I answer. We'll, we'll be back on on Monday. Back on Monday. Have a wonderful weekend. Get up and go. Spy out the land. Do things you haven't done before. Be interesting. I love you, Sandrika. Get a hobby. Read some books. Get outside. Yes. Thank you. Blessings to you. I love you guys. So I'll see you guys Monday at 7 p.m. Thank you. Thank you. It is. It's an amazing weekend. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. Go spy out the land. All right.